Good evening and hello, friends. Welcome to, at our usual time and place, Saturday Night Gaming with Mark W. and Rob Bob. I am the Mark W., the titular Mark W., and the titular Mark, the titular Rob Bob is on the other side of this headset right now. Say hello, Rob Bob. Hello. Hello. Uh, tonight feels like a very special stream because, right, well, because... Tunnels and Trolls is what we're doing tonight, and it's an RPG that's always been near and dear to my heart. And also, Rob, Bob, and I started this channel doing nothing but playing solo playthroughs, originally, of Tunnels and Trolls. Um, then we kind of branched out into, you know, video games and other kinds of game books and tabletop games. But, uh, yeah, we're getting back to our roots here with some Tunnels and Trolls. All this one, although this one is live, most of our uh, TNT plays were not live we did uh i believe one live one before this uh two actually we played um naked doom about two years ago and longer ago we did a, a play of sorcerer solitaire kind of randomly but tonight we're gonna play everybody's favorite tnt solo <laughs> and I, I kind of mean that but i, I, I also kind of am being a little facetious because it it's really known for being extremely dangerous <laughs> um even for a Tunnels and Trolls solo. But at the same time, people do love it. If you ask people who have played a lot of TNT what their favorite solos are, there's a good chance that this could win that poll. You know, City of Terror, as they would say. Or it would probably be at least in the top five. And Eric says, Naked Doom, is that when you play Doom Naked? No, no. Well, I mean, nobody wants to watch me play Doom Naked, but um, <laughs> it's, Naked Doom is also a, an extremely dangerous um Tunnels and Trolls solo. It was that one is kind of like high risk, high reward, and actually, kind of this one is too. Um, but Naked Doom is interesting because you don't have to really buy your character equipment when that you roll up because it takes time to do that. You just kind of they, they lose all their equipment at the start, so it makes it easier to just crank out <laughs> characters that you roll up on the fly and just run them through one at a time as each one dies, uh, <laughs> mercilessly, but um. Yeah, so this is what we're going to do tonight. Play the City of Terrors. This is a solo that was originally from uh, 1978. It is quite old. And it's kind of special because um, not only is it a really good one and, and you know notor notorious for being deadly, but it was written by the now kind of famous author, Michael Stackpole. This was literally the first... Book. as far as i understand it from wikipedia based knowledge <laughs> this is literally the first book he ever had published that he'd written um and he went on to write you know official battle tech and star wars books so um yeah that's pretty neat um and i want to show a little screen cap that i have about a, a brief communication i had with mr stackpole once about this very game so here's his comment i i mentioned i, I backed um there's like a little context missing. I, I mentioned I backed a more recent project that he was involved in, uh, namely Elven Lord. And I made a crack about how he killed so many of my characters in City of Terrors back, back in the day. And he replied, he said, thanks for backing the project. And I tell you that I was sorry City of Terrors killed lots of your characters. But the fun of Solos was always figuring out the cool way to tell folks that it just killed their character. A little smiley face. So he's, you know, he's kind of semi-joking, but, but he's, he is kind of admitting he took delight in just killing your characters in creative ways. Like, you know, writing a paragraph that says the horrible way, describes the horrible way you died or something like that. And I replied, ha, I did make victory all the sweeter, though. I always thought you and Ken as the toughest solo authors in roughly that order. Ken, of course, referring to the uh, original, you know, sort of main designer of Tunnels and Trolls. The game is was originally his baby, I guess you could say. And um yeah, so I always thought that Michael Mike Stackpole made really kind of deadly and yet highly rewarding adventures. And then Ken was like a little notch <laughs> below him in, in making also uh deadly but highly rewarding games. But um yeah. So essentially by the way, for those who aren't in the loop about Tunnels and Trolls, it is essentially a an RPG, a tabletop RPG, kind of like that other one that everybody knows, Dungeons and Dragons. Um it was literally the second, however, uh RPG published. I've heard there's some debate on the, the exact timing of that. Some people say Empire of the Petal Throne was second. 
ultimately it doesn't really matter that much. This TNT was like the second or third RPG ever published. Uh, one of the more interesting things about TNT is that they focused largely on what they call solo dungeons or solo adventures or solo modules, some kind of solo. And um, that's essentially a game book, what we call today a game book. It's like a fighting fantasy adventure or a choose your own adventure with, you know, character stats and stuff. So they put out, you know, look at this. You have, char- you have paragraphs and it says, you know, if you want to do this, go to 33C. That's what it is. It's basically a game book. And the publishers who were who were flying Buffalo for decades, they would publish way more of these solo adventures than the more traditional GM based adventures. You know, if you if you're not too familiar with RPGs, tabletop RPGs, you know, you probably have seen D and D played on TV shows like I don't know Stranger Things or um, Freaks and Geeks, or I think they even played it in ET a little bit. And um, you know, essentially, there's one guy who's the the boss. He's the referee. He's the storyteller. He's telling the characters what happens. You know. Uh, a goblin leaps out of a treasure chest and attacks you. You know, roll some dice to see how you do and stuff like that. And um, that's kind of the more standard way RPGs are played. But yeah, Flying Buffalo put out, this is not a precise mathematical equation, but something like, I would say something like 10 to 1 solo adventures to GM-based adventures. Maybe not 10 to 1, but like at least 5 or 6 to 1. So in other words, they overly focused on the paragraph style adventures like these two dudes arm wrestling and whoever loses is going to get their hand hand slammed onto a, a scorpion. I remember that scene vividly. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, TNT is more solo oriented, and that is uh, mostly what I did back in the day with TNT. I, I really enjoyed them a lot. I played some GM based adventures, but yeah, the focus was largely on um, solo. So that intro said um, we can delve into this. Why don't we look first at this uh, wraparound artwork by? Liz Danforth, she has done a ton of Tunnels and Trolls work. To me, if you if we talk about um, sorry, I don't know how to display this so well. If you talk about Tunnels and Trolls artwork, the first artist that comes to my mind is Liz Danforth. There are others as well, though, such as Steve Crompton and uh, Rob Carver. But as you can see here, up here it says about art by Liz Danforth and Rob Carver. So yeah, you can see it's you know this is the city of terror. It's an island city, you can see, and there's all these people, you know, hustling and bustling about, and some of them look a little shady. That's kind of the whole idea. This place is full of scum and villainy, and um, and weirdos. What's that little weird yellow guy? I don't know. He's he's he's, he's eyeing up some kind of a a steed of some sort. It looks like a goat horse or something. And these people look really tiny. <laughs> uh. Anyway, it's cool artwork. They're in the background. Sorry? I think they're in the background. I guess they're supposed to be. I think it looks like... Yeah, I guess they're supposed to be. To me, it looks sort of like... I mean, look at this guy sitting here. Yeah, he's in the foreground. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. So here's some of those... Some more of these folks doing their silly things. It looks like there's some bargaining over treasure or something happening here. Here's an elf-looking dude standing around looking fierce. <clears throat> uh some some bikini clad lady with a large eagle like bird thingy <laughs> or maybe she's tiny I, I don't know and you can see the the city's kind of sprawling and it looks like it goes up on a hill all right so yeah i always kind of like that artwork although um the the edition i had back in the day didn't have that one i got this one a few years ago for the it's called deluxe city of terror not that the game is actually bigger than the original Deluxe refers to the, the Deluxe Manual of Tunnels and Trolls. It's for that rule set, which came out in something like 2015. I guess it's almost 10 years old already somehow. Um, let's check the chat real quick. Le- Lego Lego Mosker says, Naked Doom, where your character dies before their clothes even hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty funny. That's one way to put it. Uh, <laughs> they're naked and doomed. All right. Yeah, why don't we get into this? Um, so my plan is to roll up characters on the fly i have these little cards that i printed out when i did the naked doom stream excuse me one moment um i also have a handmade this is my own homemade character sheet and most people who see this you know i'm not trying to brag here but they say it's really cool because i've made a space for everything essentially the one that comes with the uh 
the manual does not have a space for everything. And also I put a lot of what I think are helpful reminders because it's always like a little bit of rules that apply to spells or certain character classes. And it's, it's difficult to remember some of these little rules. So I kind of put them in little parenthetical notes. Um, for example, here's a, a little note about the warrior bonuses. So if you're a warrior, you roll more, more dice in combat, essentially. And wizards have a limitation to the dice they can roll in combat, etc. Um, but yeah, the way I've found it tends to work is in most of these solos, especially the deadlier ones, of which <laughs> City of Terrors is one, just go with the basics. And you're probably going to die. You can always scroll some stuff on the back. So I have these little cards that are very lean and mean. But on the off chance that my character survives and develops and, you know, accumulates a lot of equipment or, or spells or weapons, what have, what have you, I can transfer them over. But that's the idea. But if anyone wants to uh, be linked to a, a PDF of this document, let me know. And I can send you the link later after the stream. Um, but I kind of had this handy just for these little rules references mostly because I always have to, you know, remember how these things work. Like when you spend adventure points, how does that work? To increase one attribute by one, spend its current value times 10 adventure points, etc. Um, talents are a thing. I have to, I'm kind of refreshing myself right now, by the way, my own memory. All characters gain one talent per level. Rogues gain, gain a bonus roguish talent on even numbered levels. All characters may obtain additional talent for 300 adventure points once per level. Talent list on pages 80, 68 to 69. With simple talent rules, the talent gives plus three to relevant saving rule. All right. And it might sound complicated if you never played the game, but really it's not that bad. It's just a little challenging to remember every rule offhand. Uh, let's see. Lago Mosker says it was big. It was the equivalent of open world, a huge advancement in game book solo dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. City of Terrors was called like a, what do they call it? Like a gigantic mega dungeon or something. Um, and he also says all that, and all that Danforth art, how could not the old folks love City of Terrors? I agree. Dan Demand said, hey, welcome, Dan Demand. His pretty nice artwork gets the imagination going before you even open the book. For real. Yeah, let's uh let's crack open the book now that we're ready to do so. Um it never fails. Whenever I do these streams, I leave my my G my my Google chat open and people don't bother me for days. But it's always my friend Scott sending me stupid political links and stuff. Okay, I'm going to close that. I hope you didn't hear the beeps, but you probably did. Um, all right. You're not stupid, Scott, in case you're watching. It just you have bad timing with links. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's... Um, you know, this is not a professional operation, so there will be some fumbling with cameras and whatnot. But yeah, I like to take my time and uh, kind of read over everything, and then we'll jump into it. These streams, I usually let them run pretty long. Um... Our Naked Doom stream from last time ran about four and a half hours. <laughs> and it's actually my most watched, or my most replayed video of the hundreds of streams I've done on this channel. It is the number one most replayed stream. Anyway, here we have Deluxe City of Terrors. Solitaire Adventure number nine for Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. Written by Michael A. Stackpole. Deluxe TNT Upgrades by Ken St. Andre. Wraparound cover artwork by Rob Carver, Liz Danforth, and Steve Crompton. Interior illustrations by Rob Carver, Carver and Liz Danforth. Published by Flying Buffalo. And by the way, a quick mention about that. Flying Buffalo was bought out a few years ago after the uh, guy who kind of ran the whole business, Rick Loomis, unfortunately passed away. And then that company was called Web Spear, and they kind of just sat on the IP for a couple years, and we didn't hear anything. You know, the community was kind of annoyed. And then we just heard news, like, maybe one or two years ago now that they were, uh, it was sold again to another company called um, Rebellion. And they say they have good plans for it. They like that they, you know, love the game from back in the day and they want to improve it and everything. So we'll see what they do. But yeah, let's get to it. We have here is a note written by Mr. Ken St. Andre in 2013. Interesting. They must have been, uh, I think the deluxe edition of TNT didn't come out until maybe 2015. So I guess this was worked on it, but you know, I guess it took them a couple of years to get it all together. So yes, yeah, so this was probably part of that effort. All right. Let's see. Uh, camera. The, this version of city of terrors has been modified slightly to be compatible with the deluxe TNT rules. 
When it was not practical to modify the text, there are instructions for dealing with those situations in these notes. Please read carefully. That means these changes are in effect. One, your character should have at least eight attributes. Yep, at least eight. Well, strength, con, dex, speed, the physical attributes, and int, whiz, luck, and charisma, the mental attributes. All spells are powered by whiz, not strength. If your character, and that's a reference to back in the day, you would like spend your strength to cast spells. Then later on in more recent editions, they made it a new attribute called wizardry or, or whiz. If your character does not have a wizardry or speed attribute, stop now, roll 3d6 and assign attribute values. If you roll natural triples, keep that number and roll again. Your character is a specialist and you'll have to check the deluxe rules to see how that would affect its abilities. Yes, yeah, it's describing how the deluxe rules work basically. In the meantime, play it as a citizen that just happens to know whatever your character already knew under the 5th edition rules. Don't follow that last sentence, but okay. Two, your characters may have talents as outlined in the deluxe rule. I, I don't know why it's kind of just um, repeating the deluxe rules, but okay. Uh, I'm going to gloss over that a little bit. A roll of three, one or two is an automatic failure. Yeah, so it used to be that anytime you're making a saving roll... If you rolled like under a five, let's say you rolled a one and a three, that was an automatic failure. But that was kind of reduced to only a, only a three, which is a one and a two. You might might wonder why not snake eyes. That's because there's a rule in Tunnels and Troll called doubles add and roll over it. Anytime you roll doubles, that would have been cool if I just accidentally rolled doubles there. Anytime you roll doubles, you 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 kind of snowball your roll. You get to add it up. So this is a 4 plus whatever I roll next. And now it's a 4 plus 8 altogether. So that's a 12. That applies to all saving rolls. Anytime you have to, you know, roll to see if you dodge the arrow or whatever or anything, that saving roll rule applies. So essentially only 1 and a 2 is an automatic failure in uh, going by the deluxe rules. The rules of magic have changed. Any spells you cast are paid for with your wiz attribute, not your strength attribute. I'm actually kind of a little bit nervous not nervous, but <laughs> I haven't played this yet, this particular deluxe version of City of Terror. So this is kind of making me think that maybe they didn't bother to edit the text that says, well, you can just cast this spell and now lose three strength. And and that they're saying, well, you just have to remember that it actually whiz instead of strength. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't judge it before, before I get to that. I mean, it's fine if that's how they did it. Just I would prefer if they, they did the legwork to... Uh, I, I, I'm prejudging it. Let me just let me just put that thought aside. There are many situations in this module that assume you will stand and fight to the death when any sane person would run away. Excuse me. Got a thingy in my throat. If you find any of these paragraphs and you would rather run than fight, make a saving roll on luck or speed. The level to be determined by how many foes you have to face. Okay. For example, if you were facing five bloodbaths, you would need to make a level five saving roll to escape. If you're up against a single foe, no matter how large, you need only to make a level one saving roll to escape. If you make the flea roll successfully, go to immediately to 57C. If you can't logically run away, you can't do this. No saving roll to escape for you. Okay. So they're just trying to, um, it looks like Ken is trying to patch the game a little bit. Uh, the game can really throw some tough enemies at you, City of Terror. So you have a chance to run away even if the text doesn't say to. But you always wind up in 57C, which is... I don't know where that is. Um, huh, interesting, though. Number six, where we show character abilities... Oh, sorry, character attributes. The attributes for Within Speed did not exist when City of Terrors was first published. I do not want to change combat ads, so please give all characters without a speed rating 1 of 11. Okay. For a whiz, give them 12 points unless the character is a wizard. In that case, give it 12 plus 2d6, doubles add and roll over. You can just pencil these numbers into the book. Yeah, see, I kind of don't like that. They should have just edited it properly. They were revising it for deluxe, but oh well. On the wandering people chart, you will need to add the attributes of wizards, yeah, wizard speed to the characters there. You may simply roll 3d6. All right, fine. 3 6 for everyone except Inrem the wizard. Give him a whiz of 35 and change his level to 3. Okay. <laughs> they didn't want to. All right. What they're talking about, by the way, is um, there is a. This is kind of a really cool mechanic in um, City of Terror. There's a list of wandering people, and you actually make a deck of cards out of them, and you draw them. Like, you know, if you're at an intersection, it might say, draw a wandering person. So you draw the top card, and, uh, you know, they're just printed in the back. They don't provide you with cards. So I. 
I kind of made a copy of each one and I and I copied you know I cut and pasted them onto these cards so I can draw them as I play but uh yeah it looks like they you know in the older edition there are only six attributes you can see strength IQ luck let me put it on this camera that'd be better Strength, IQ, luck, constitution, dexterity, and charisma. So in the more recent editions, such as Deluxe, TNT, there's also speed and wizardry. And again, wizardry is your, your battery, your energy, your mana for magic. But they didn't want to edit these things, which... I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to say any harsh words. I mean, it's, I, there's, I mean, not harsh words, but, you know, I, I feel like there's... I feel like it was... I feel like they should have put in the legwork. Don't make the, get the customer put in the legwork. Anyway... We'll manage, though. That's fine. But I found the character they were talking about, Inrim the Wizard. And they said to make him level 3, which he already is. Uh, change it. Okay. They said level 3 right here. But it says to give him wizardry of 35. I think he should be changing his level to 4 because by the, the deluxe rules, um, you take your highest attribute, which in this case is 42, and you essentially slash the last number, and that's your level. So he's he's level four. So he shouldn't be level three. So I'm going to write in 35 whiz and make him level four, I guess. All right. So, yeah, you can tell a couple things are apparently a little bit sloppy. Anyway, let's keep going. There are some situations. <laughs> this is actually kind of interesting. There was a, there was no um, concept of I don't know. Should we? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to phrase it. Should we be more politically correct, maybe, or uh, or uh, be concerned about if children are playing this? So there are some uh, adult situations. Uh, they don't get that explicit though. They don't really get explicit at all. But let's just read what it says. There are some situations in the module that quickly that evolve quickly into some kind of sexual action. <laughs> the illustrations show heterosexual encounters, but there is no reason to believe that they're all male, female in nature. Girl, girl, and man, man are equally possible erotic adventures. Female player characters also can do their share of seducing and being seduced. In these situations, simply adjust the gender differences in your mind to suit your own player pr proclivities. In order to keep the adventure moving right along, the author has omitted the clever flirting conversational foreplay that would precede each such erotic encounter but as players you should note that things aren't quite as wham bam thank you ma'am as the text makes it just all right fine so uh just kind of patching that little aspect to the game too i guess <laughs> just like you know just if you want to say it's man on man fine don't worry about it it was written in a different time <laughs> and you know it, you can assume there was more than just wham bam thank you all right here is the preface this is um Prep is also written by Mr. St. Andre. It says, Mike said I could write a preface if I wanted, and I'm taking him up on it. City of Terror is, a, is unique as a programmed adventure. It simulates 23 possible adventures in a full-fledged city somewhere in the Tunnels and Trolls world that contains Kosht and Kazan. I don't think it is very near those two, but it certainly would be an interesting place to visit. Now, if Mike has a single fault, it is a tendency to kill off your character without giving you a proper chance to get out of it. He can't be blamed for this. It is the kind of thing I have done myself in the Death Trap Equalizer and Naked Doom. But I want to tell you, I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry for being so cruel. And to make it up to you, I have, a I have written in a chance, asterisk, occasionally for you to escape in cases where I think Mike kills you unfairly. It isn't much. It reduces a 100% certain, certain doom to a 95% certain doom. And not a naked one, though. There are many breaks that... There aren't many breaks that good in the TNT universe. <laughs> That's funny. The city of Gull can be mapped and drawn by anyone with the patience to follow the directions given for the various streets and buildings. As such, it can be then... It can then be used as a target of attack for characters playing Monsters, Monsters. That's a reference to like a spinoff of TNT called Monsters, Monsters, in which you play the monsters instead of um, uh, humans, you know, and elves and such, and dwarves raiding a dungeon with monsters in it. The, it's the monsters raiding a city with, you know, humans, elves, and dwarves in it, essentially. And Monsters, Monsters is still a uh, property of these original folks such as Ken, whereas TNT is not. So they still build, you know, they still create stuff for Monsters, Monsters specifically now, but not TNT. 
Another thing that could be done with it is for one person to run the city like a dungeon and for a party of two or more characters to go through it as a team. This would requir require that the game master modify some of the instructions given in the booklet, but an imaginative and experienced GM could do it easily. This is the most clever and extensive adventure set in the conventional TNT universe yet. I had a ton of fun, a lot of fun, playtesting it before Flying Buffalo got around to printing it. I'm sure you will have fun too. So good luck. May your characters grow and thrive, at least the first time they take a stroll in the perilous city of Gull on the Range Sea. Okay, that's a good little intro. Now we're going to get into the uh, the meat of it, I think. Meat. All right, here's our map of Boron. It's just kind of for flavor. You don't really need to look at this too deeply. Range Sea, Kazan, Kostin, Kanor, the Borderless Sea, the Claws of the Dragon. So Gull is a city on this island called Foron. Designed by Danforth from a map by Stackpole. Cool. All right, so we had the preface by Ken. Now we're getting to the actual City of Terror intro by Mike. I got to move things around on my desk a little bit. I'm a little cramped. Apologies. Introduction. Welcome to the City of Terrors. This is the first open air solitaire adventure. It's kind of amusing that this is like a, a new concept, like an RPG where you're, you're not underground. Holy crap. It's amazing. <laughs> but this was 1978. Oh, pretty old. It is set in the city of Gull on the sun-baked tropical island of Foron. You come by ship, disembark, and are taken by carriage to the hotel. I'm going to have to roll up my character sheet in a moment. You take a room and tip the clerk 20 GPs to make sure that your things don't get ripped off. Between adventures, you may drop stuff off in your room, change your clothing, or exchange your weapons. Any humanoid creature, be it orc, ogre, or elf, may journey here. If you happen to be a man-tiger... <laughs> Courtesy of the justifiably infamous Ken St. Andre and the Death Trap Equalizer dungeon, you will find what you are looking for to the east of the hotel. I guess it makes sense if you uh, turned into a man tiger in that adventure. It might say you have to go to the city of Gull to get cured, or I don't know. Something like that. It's kind of funny, when, uh, or kind of fun, I should say, when sometimes the adventures interact with each other. Like sometimes. Uh, Oh, and maybe it's even in this adventure if you uh, get imprisoned or something it'll say throw him into the naked doom dungeon or throw him into the arena of Kazan you have to fight as a slave now and you can you know if you play it straight you go alright I gotta go get that other book off the shelf and now, now I'm in the arena of Kazan fighting for my life magic may be used but only in the very limited way it is allowed here if I don't specifically say you can use it you can't there are job openings in Gull if you sign on, follow the directions at your place of employment. This adventure was designed with the well-rounded mid-level character in mind. However, at times, the first leveler will win out where a superhero loses. Keep this in mind. If you are killed as a result of missing a saving roll, you may go to 4E and get another chance at life. I have to remember these special things. Um, I'll keep reading for now. But there's two things, right? You can flee enemies if it logically makes sense. And you have to make that saving roll on speed or luck according to the number of enemies you're fighting. And if you succeed, you go to a certain paragraph. But also, if you miss a saving roll and just die, you can go to 4E and get another chance. If you forgot to go there and then you and you are not reminded inside, then you die. <laughs> so use it or lose it. At times, your rewards will be technolo technologically advanced or magical devices. If you recover any of these, they are worth 100 experience points, EPs, when you leave the adventure, also known as adventure points. Whenever you come to an intersection, you must roll up. So anytime it says you're at an intersection, you roll up a wandering person and figure out what happens to you. The wandering persons are listed at the back of the book. It is worth your while to read through that section before beginning. Yeah, we'll have to do that. There are a couple of places where you can leave the dungeon without returning to your hotel. If you do so, you forfeit all the equipment, treasure, and what have you, which you left behind in your hotel room. Saving rolls are made on all attributes at one point or another. 
unless specified, all saving rolls will be made on luck, and they are to be made at the character's own level. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. That's kind of their way of scaling it, I guess. So, you know, in other words, the higher level you are, the more difficult the saving rolls get. And I guess unless they say otherwise. You'll need dice, the rules to total and troll, and maybe a deck of cards. Paper and pencil are vital as well. Good luck. Be wary. The City of Terrors can live up to its name. Keep your weapon handy. A hand on your money belt and go to 33C to begin. All right, so I'm going to actually have my... Uh, I'm going to roll up my character. I'm going to use some special um, rules that I made to roll up a more advanced character than a level 1 guy. But first, let me take note of a couple things that I mentioned a second ago. Um, saving roll fail. Any thoughts or comments or questions in the chat or Mr. Rob Bob? No thoughts. I don't have any thoughts. You don't think? Okay. And what did Ken say on the other page? If I um uh yeah, flee. If you flee successfully, you go to sorry, it's not in the camera right now. I'm just looking around fifty seven. See. All right, so we're gonna roll up a character, and we're gonna use my special, my special optional rule that roll up a slightly more advanced character, because uh, <laughs> level one guys aren't gonna have a great shot at life here, and it does suggest mid level characters, right? And you can just use a, a level one character, um, but I'm gonna use my. Well, this is actually my first time trying my special rules I came up with that I've just been throwing around in my mind. Essentially what it is, is you roll as normal, roll up a character as normal, and then choose how many levels you want to bump him up. For example, if I roll up a human, maybe I'll start with that. He's going to be level one, most likely. The level is determined by the highest attribute, as I mentioned before. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to say perhaps, well, let's make him level four. And then what I'm going to do is, um, again, because the attribute determines... The level, if I want a level 4 guy, I'm going to ramp up one attribute of my choice to 40, because the f four, 40 is the minimum to be uh, level 4, that one of the attributes has to be. And then I'm going to give myself one die per level and just assign those as points to, to other attributes as I see fit and give myself some bonus um, gold to buy stuff with, because maybe it represents having some experience. I've accumulated some extra stuff, some extra wealth. Uh, I have, I'm going to do something like an extra die plus 10 for gold per, per level, I guess. So that's my, my my rule that I've been tossing around in my head. I kind of eventually want to make that uh, a little more fleshed out and perhaps have like a, a chart of magic items that you found along your journeys. Because, you know, if you, if you roll up a, a level 10 guy, he probably found some cool magic items along, all, along the way. But for now, I'm omitting all that. And yeah, I guess we're gonna roll something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do a plain old human to start, and then I'll use my advancement rules to make him a not lame human. Most humans are pretty lame, <laughs> only in the sense that they um are kind of weaker than most other kindred. Uh, one thing about this game though is um, in hu if you pick a human, you have a special ability where for every saving roll you make. Or you try to make if you fail you get another reroll as a human that's their thing there's supposed to be resilient in that weird way of making uh saving rolls so um it's kind of a balancer you know people always found humans were traditionally weaker than all the other kindred so that was a balancer like an incentive to actually play as humans and you know it's interesting though because in tnt a lot of the community actually thinks that balance is bad or that it's overrated, and sometimes people say, well, wow, I never felt like playing a human because it just seemed to suck. So, you know, sometimes balance gets worked in there a little bit. But yeah, traditionally in the older editions, humans uh, did not have that extra saving roll rule. Anyway, without further ado, let's roll up some stats. So there's a special rule in TNT. Uh, uh, Ken has always been into if you have doubles in a roll, you get to add and re-roll, things like that. So in this case, for character attributes, if you roll triples, you actually add and re-roll. Triples are relatively rare, rarer than doubles, but it can happen. It definitely does happen. So, we'll, yeah, let's uh, roll some stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to get everything on screen here. <laughs> it's a little difficult. All right, strength. 
That looks like a solid 12, not terrible. By the way, you guys in the chat can come up with a name for my human, please. Or you, Rob Bob, you can do that as well. Dexterity, 11. So just in case anybody doesn't know, on three dice, pretty much 10 or 11 is the median. So, so far, he's pretty much dead in the middle, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, he is low on constitution. Um, eh. Now I'm remembering there's a, a special house rule that Ken himself suggested. <laughs> if you roll an eight or lower on something, you should do a reroll. Uh, I'll give myself one such reroll. It seems a little much to get to make that, you know, apply that rule for all attributes entirely. All right, so that's a 10 in constitution. Charisma. Nine. Luck. Oof. Nine. Nine. I kind of went oof because it's, it's so good to have good luck in this game. <laughs> Most of the saving rolls are on luck and it figures into your combat ads along with strength, dexterity, and speed. IQ. My dice are flying everywhere. Let's use two hands because apparently I can't handle them tonight. All right, 11. Wizardry. Wizardry does not matter if you're not a spellcaster. It could but theoretically matter, but you're not fueling magic with it. You don't have mana, really, if you're a warrior. Wow, he's really good with speed. Look at that. 17 speed. All right, he's good at something. <laughs> he's speed. <laughs> Very fast. All right, we're going to have to call him... <laughs> you know what I'm going to call him? Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Because he's speedy. Har, har, har. All right, let's put our dice tray aside for now. And now I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to level him up to... Um, so naturally, he's level one because essentially, again, you just look at the highest attribute, chop off that last digit, and that's that's the level. That's how it works in this game. There's no... Once you get to, you know, 5,000 experience, you level up. It doesn't work like that. It used to work like that. But they, I guess they decided this was more elegant somewhere along the line. Or more fun or something. I think it's pretty fun. So I'm going to, um, I'm not going to get too crazy with my bump. My bump ability. <laughs> my bump rules. Uh, can we make a level two or three? Let's see. I'll pick one of those two. Um, let's see. Do I want to make him a warrior? Could be a speedy warrior, a rogue, or whatnot. Let's go with a warrior. Keep it simple. We're easing ourselves into the game. It's been a while. He's a warrior. And I'm gonna make him um level. Let's just get, let's keep it a little bit moderate first. Level two. So using my special rules, you pick an attribute, bump that to 20, and then I'm gonna roll 2d6 of extra points to assign it however I wish. So let's go with, well, Warrior seems, it kind of seems to make sense that Warriors would bump up their strength. So he's going to have 20 strength. So now he's actually stronger than, more, more strong than Speedy, but that's okay. He could still be Speedy Gonzalez. When he was level one, his speed was a thing. So let's get some extra attribute, attribute points here. Two dice. That's nine. And, you know, I'm totally making this up, but this is hugely encouraged by by Ken himself and the community, community in general, they say, generally, if you aren't making up your own rules and tunnels and trolls, you're not playing it right. So anyway, I'm going to add nine um, points that I'm going to sign freely. I definitely want to have some better luck. Let's bump luck to 12. So I have six points left to spread around. All right. Uh... Six, let's add three each to dexterity and constitution. Let's go with that. All right, so I have my level two human warrior. He's still probably going to get his butt handed to him, but um, <laughs> that's all right. All right, so now what you do is you determine your combat adds. Now, how this works is for strength, dexterity, luck, and speed, every point over 12 gives you what's called an add and that means in all your combat rolls you add that amount so we're going to have eight adds from strength two from dexterity so that's 10 so far nothing from luck and five from speed so we have plus 15 adds, which isn't terrible 
you know, oftentimes you roll up a new character, they have like two ads. So obviously I, you know, he's my, he's my automatic level advancement. So it's just not true to the basic rules, but well, having 15 ads is a lot better than going in like with two or whatever. So let's roll uh 3d6 times 10 for starting gold. And I said I was going to throw in um two more using my, my cheat rule. <laughs> so let's just roll them all at once, I guess. Uh, actually, is that right? Yeah, I get that right. I think that would work. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna add this up. That's a 10, 17, meaning 170 gold. Now we gotta buy stuff. Wow, I saw we had actually seven viewers for a moment. Now we got four of them. <laughs> seven viewers is pretty high for me. Um, we can do talents real quick. Uh, you get a talent per level, as I noted on that character sheet. So it's time to pull up the e old manual. Yes, yeah, is gonna. <laughs> Sometimes I'm gonna have to break out the giant tome here. Um, I'm trying to think which camera I want to use. Do, do, do. Well, let's just let me find the the list first, and then I'll figure out how to get it on camera. So unfortunately, I haven't really flipped through this. Uh, rule book in a while i used to kind of have memorized where all the important stuff was so let me find talent in the table of contents burr, burr, burr. all right 205 so essentially what a talent is anytime you're told to roll a saving roll and if you have a talent that can apply you have to be judicious about that it's not going to list all the talents um but then you can uh, add three to your saving roll. There's also the concept of advanced talents, but I'm going to keep it simple. Sorry, this isn't working right now. Bear with me a sec. This book is just too big. All right, here's a, here's a great bunch of talents. There's also a couple on the previous page. And you're allowed to make up your own, too. But... You got actor, painter, sculptor. These are all like uh, art, arty things. We got athletic related stuff. Now again, I like to I like to make this interactive. If you want to suggest anything that I take, please free to call it out in the chat. Otherwise, I'll just pick something random. Um, again, these are for saving rolls. If some of these are not going to be useful ninety nine percent of the time, like architect. Uh, but um, Obviously, things related to lock picking and whatnot could be helpful. Who is here? Oh, wow, the chat's been going for a while. It just didn't. It went very fast, apparently. It's like it all it all dumped on my screen at once. So let me catch up with that quick. Who says, "Can I be your next of kin?" Yeah, kin means race. Arturo said, "Dumb boy, welcome, Ar Arturo." I guess you were replying to when I was asking about uh, naming my character. Stu says, "Rear stench the human. You should kill your character, restart, clear. If you had good luck, you have better rolls." <laughs> says Stu. Uh, should have made him a tiger man since then. Yeah, for some reason my my chat was like not updating, and then suddenly I got all this dumped at once. Make him an Olympic athlete says Stu. Candy maker says Dan. Archer slash sharpshooter says Eric. Hmm. I don't want to do archer slash. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I, I just kind of want to keep the the equipment purchasing simple simple, and I have to worry about <laughs> arrows and stuff though. So uh, I don't know. You know, I'm in the I'm on the island, so I'm gonna perhaps take some of these um. One of these marine knowledge things. How about uh, navigation or piloting or sailing or something like that? I don't think you actually do much of that in this adventure, honestly. How about we do persuasion? There's definitely seduction, <laughs> seduction in this game. <laughs> um, theoretical math. Yeah, that's... <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick uh, something related to marine knowledge or something related to, like, athleticism or something. So let's go with... Let's go with sailing and you know what? I'll pick I'll pick your suggestion, Eric. Archer slash sharpshooter. I just don't know if I'm gonna have any bows to start with. Juggler. Juggler. Well, I'll go with that. Not with juggler, with with, uh, <laughs> with what Eric suggested. Yeah. Alright, so what I say, sailing and We'll go with archery. 
All right. So pardon me while I fumble around with the camera work. It's a little bit awkward. Got so much stuff going on. All right. So we'll say archery and um, sailing. Can't spell apparently. Okay. All right. So now we can do some purchases. Um, trying to think of how I'm going to. I got to figure out how to get this um, big hefty book up there. Otherwise, I could use this, this GM screen. Which has some handy references for like equipment and stuff. I could just use that. Let's see. Wow. Put this guy away. Uh let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, what did you say there? Dan said I was just laughing at Candy Maker, not recommending it. Yeah. I mean, it could be useful, but <laughs> I don't think it is in this adventure. All right, uh, those are more like supplies and stuff. Let's look at our basic weapon and armor. Now, I have 170 gold with my bonuses that I gave myself. Um, it's not a huge amount. You could easily roll 170 with three dice because you just roll 17 times 10 would get you that. Um, so I'm a warrior. Uh, dual wielding is great when you can do it. Now, the thing is, every weapon has a strength and a dexterity requirement, as you can see on this chart. And if you want to dual wield, you have to add up the requirements. But you can do pretty, you can go pretty far with grabbing um, or wielding two kinds of uh, daggers. I might do that. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a very common tactic I've used where I would get two, two daggers and dual wield. Uh, uh, I kind of don't quite have the dexterity, apparently. Well, I do it for Dirks. Hmm. There's more options in the main manual. Like, I'm, I almost feel like breaking it out just to fine tune my choice. Eh, let's not do that. So let's go with a Dirk. So if it, Dirk has such low requirements for some reason, that's just a dinky little dagger. And if you see like a slash, that means for melee, the requirement is one. And for ranged attacks, in other words, throwing the, the dagger, the requirement is 12. So maybe I'll get a Dirk and uh, I don't know. I could look up a look up swords or something too. Maybe a Dirk and a um, a short sword to start. Or scimitar. How's my dexterity? Yeah, I could do a scimitar. Strength twelve, dexterity twelve, a, a scimitar and a Dirk. Dirk the daring says Stu. Yeah, why don't I do that? A scimitar. This is not like you know the product of deep analysis. I just kind of want to grab something that sounds cool and. and It'll probably work pretty well. All right, so I'm going with those. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, it's not a saxophone, Eric. <laughs> Actually, you know, the main list of weapons in the in the full manual is insane, and they have like diagrams and descriptions of them in the index. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, what were we getting? A uh, scimitar, which is. Four, da four dice. And I have the requirements to use it. I'm not going to write it all out. Along with the Dirk, which is two dice. Okay. And that's going to cost me a total of um, 10 for the Dirk. And the Scimitar costs 66. Strange number. So 76 altogether. Meaning I am down to 94 in my pocket. Okay. Um, it did say in the in the book of City of Terrors I have to tip the guy at the hotel 20 gold if I want my if I want to stash my stuff, I think. So I'll just say I'm not stashing my stuff. Or I could tip him later if I want to do it later. Um it would be good to get some some degree of armor. Now, back in the day, I used to play this game like a really, um, you know, not quite as fast and loose. I'd be like, oh, I got to buy the clothing and I got to buy the shoes. Nah, I'm just going to gloss over that. I don't really care that much. Um, but let's look at armor. Some basic armor down here. Um, I can't use a shield because I'm dual wielding. Some of these things actually uh, give you a penalty to dexterity. Um, or well, it might just get it something like a breastplate for 70. Why don't I just do that and keep it simple? Or I could just put a big, big freaking helmet on my, on my head. 
I used to. <laughs> I'm going to show you a cartoon I wrote. I'm going to interrupt myself. When I was a kid, I, I took this out because I thought it'd be fun to show. Let me put this aside for a moment. I had the fifth edition of Tunnel and Trolls, which actually came out in, I think, the, the late 70s or something. And this is it. Tunnels and Trolls for solo or group play. It's still in pretty good shape. I made a book cover <laughs> like we used to do in school. And I drew my own nonsense on it. Let me pull back the camera a little bit. And this was some dragon or something. I don't know what the hell it was. Or demon. And these are people fighting. This is someone finding a, uh, a giant jewel that they're puzzled by and stuff. But this was this is this is this was my my standard way to outfit beginning characters because in the older edition these two daggers are called cookeries. And what I would do is I I found like the most efficient and, and relatively inexpensive way to outfit a new character that got them some pretty good stuff was two cookeries which were daggers that rolled two dice and added five. So I would dual wield those. They were pretty inexpensive. And I would get him a full helm, like a knight helm without the actual full set of armor. And also, you probably can't see this very well, but gauntlets and greaves, which are gauntlets are just like, you know, uh, armor for your hand and I guess forearm. And the greaves are for like your legs similarly. So I would have all these characters, newbie characters walking around with their full helms, their dual cookeries <laughs> and their gauntlets and greaves. And this was from, uh, when did, I was like 11 years old or so when I drew this, I guess. And, you know, the actual, well, that's my aunt's phone number. She passed away. Um, but uh, it has this whole explanation. What is Tunnels and Trolls? Tunnels and Trolls is a fancy role-playing game, and it kind of goes on and on. So I made fun of that, and I just wrote, what is Tunnels and Trolls a game? That's that's the full explanation. That's all we needed. Um but you you might be you might get a kick out of this Arturo when I show you in a second. Cause I found an old character that I had in the book. And guess what his name was? You're gonna see some really yellow paper here, by the way. His name was Fatty the Elf. <laughs> the really yellow loose leaf paper here. Look, he's got the the, the twin cookeries like I mentioned. And the gauntlets, the greaves, and the full helm. I I would so min max these character it was just it was just the best way to the most affordable way to get yourself some solid stuff but in this current edition things are a little bit rebalanced so <clears throat> you can't always just it's not like a no-brainer to get that every time essentially uh i don't know where all my stats are i must have i don't know maybe this is a roll, roll roll up in progress and i put away fatty the elf before i finished rolling him up but anyway that's uh this is the old edition anyway uh i'm not gonna lower this whole manual fully although i'm kind of kind of liked it it's actually kind of nice it's so thin and it has all you need the new one i like the new one because it has all these fancy optional rules and great levels of detail but it, it it is nice to have a lightweight thing as well anyway but yeah this is the deluxe manual <laughs> bonk massive i think i got this signed by a couple of the people involved Oh yeah, Rick Loomis. He's the one who ran fluffing, uh, fluffing, flying buffalo. Who unfortunately passed away. Ken Saint Andre's signatures up there, and Mr. Steve Crompton down there. I need to get Liz Danforth to sign it at some point. I have to find her at a convention or something. Anyway, that's Danforth's art right there. I love her artwork. I actually, I actually have some of her artwork on my wall. I'm kind of going on a tangent. I know that's not really focused on the game here but i think this is kind of fun hopefully but um there that's some of her artwork on my wall including the deluxe tunnel controlled cover right there she was selling like these postcard sized bits of artwork on her patreon this is like an ent she also did artwork by the way for the uh the original official middle earth role-playing game so i think this ent might be in search for that uh, might be a rel related to that and that's called Ent in search of the Ent wives. So he's like looking for lady Ents. Like, where are my lady Ents? All right. <laughs> and wow. This book cover I made talks about um, some tennis players. <laughs> like Andre and Agassi are going to be playing. <laughs> August 15th through 23rd at Yale University. <laughs> wow. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's quite a tangent, isn't it? Um, Dan says, I don't think I've ever seen a fat elf. Eric says, Santa used to be an elf before he was made St. Nicholas. So there's, <laughs> there's one fat elf. All right. What the hell are we doing? We're buying armor, right? Um, yeah, let's do. keep it simple, stupid. Pull up our jar here. Let's get some breastplate. That is four hits taken. Essentially, that means when, you know, the enemy does four or fewer damage, the breastplate will block that. So I'll buy that. It costs pretty much all the rest of my money, though. 70 gold. Apparently, I didn't give myself enough of a bonus using my special cheat rule. <laughs> um, I want more gold. That's what I'm saying. What did I say? It costs 70? I guess I have 24 still. That's not terrible. All right, let's get the breastplate. All right. Now, as a uh, warrior, I can add my level in dice rolled. That's an ability they have. So I'll be rolling a total of eight dice in combat and adding my adds of 15. Also, I have a special warrior ability that lets my armor work better, essentially, which uh, I think I noted how that works on this, um, this special character sheet that I made up. And the way it works is you can double the hits that it takes, but you have to check for damage to the armor. And the damage is increased by one if saving roll unlock with level of current damage plus one is filled. It sounds complicated, but it's not really that bad. Essentially, you just roll some dice, and if, you, uh, if you're not very lucky, then your your breastplate would or whatever armor would only, you know, you would subtract from it. So instead of four damage soaked up it would soak up three damage if i overextend it by doubling its power for one combat round essentially uh that's the idea uh all right so you know i have 24 gold i could buy other stuff with if you want to look at random supplies and stuff they tend to not come in handy that often in solo adventures like rarely does it say if you have a rope you know you can do this as you know you never know it could happen Sometimes a mirror, I, you know, mirrors can, of course, um, you know, <laughs> there's certain kinds of monsters, Medusas and the like, where it's like, if you have a mirror, you can, you can kill them. If not, you're dead. Um, I don't remember if that's in this particular adventure, but uh, it always feels good to be able to uh, make fire somehow with matches or something. So why don't I make, why don't I get some matches for, what is that, five gold? And I guess I'll buy a backpack, like, like a school backpack, because I guess I'm, I'm going to school. Well, that's one gold and five silver. I'm just going to round that to two gold because I don't care about making... Well, I'll give myself the five sil silver change. I won't be that lazy. Uh, so, uh, uh, 22 for the backpack. And the matches cost five, so I'm down to 17. Backpack. Matches. You know what? They have a thing called the Delver's Package. Maybe I should just buy that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It's like kind of a, an all-around package that gives these useful stuff. I'll get used to this camera situation one of these days. But I think I'm going to buy that, actually. Backpack, a day of food, water skin, five matches, five torches, 30 feet of heavy twine, and two pieces of chalk. Because you might need to uh, teach students how to do math on a chalkboard or something. Uh, I don't know. I just made that up. Um, that costs five gold, so I'm gonna, nah. I'll give myself, like, whatever I had before. I'm just, I'm just estimating, I don't care if it's perfect. Delver's package, sure, I'm getting that. Instead of the backpack and matches separately, because this actually includes backpack and matches, only five, though, torches as well. Um, I will throw in a mirror because I can. That is two gold, five silver. I'm going to roll with that. Already my character sheet is a hot mess <laughs> of erasing and whatnot. Sorry, I wasn't showing it. I think we're ready to uh, traverse the city of Gull finally, now that we're like an hour into the stream. <laughs> but, you know, we were, I was, you know, talking and showing off fun things and going over 
the uh the introduction and all that stuff so yeah why don't we put this little guy aside we there we go set up our camera a little better and go to paragraph what was the paragraph 33c to begin should i start making a map too i think i probably should oh look here's that same uh cover picture but in black and white interesting I kind of, in a sense, I like it better in black and white. I don't know why. I guess I feel like um, the color makes certain characters pop out and stuff. It's almost more like a Where's Waldo. You get to look at this and try to see what you find. <laughs> look, I find this little guy here. All right. And he's leading a, a horse. But again, I'm uh, like Rob Bob said before, it, some of it might be the, that they're in the distance. But some, many of them do look like they're very tiny, though. Anyway, 33C, we said, right? All right. I'm getting ready to write. UFO? What's that? Is that a UFO? Yeah. Um, Michael Stackpole did not shy away from letting you find UFOs and dinosaurs and all this random stuff. So that can be a thing we encounter. We're not there yet, though. We're in the basic boring city square at the moment. This is the city square. Here is your hotel, along with a carriage, a carriage ready to take you to your ship at 38D if you wish to leave now. Yeah, so this is um, not really a game that has a plot. Um, city of Terror, you just kind of wander around the city encountering stuff, and you can leave when you want to. There might, there might be like little kind of side quests that you do, but nothing forces you to complete them, if I recall. You just kind of go around and get killed. <laughs> now... As I mentioned earlier, this is a very dangerous adventure. So if I die, I might cheat to some degree. I might sometimes just roll up a new character. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, you know, I could either say, well, I'm going to go back and undo that choice or roll up a new character. We'll see how it goes. If you want to explore, you may go east on the dark way. I guess I should uh, draw the map. Let's draw the um, city square at the uh, center, I suppose. do it like a square how about that and you can go east on the dark way guess i'll make that bigger so you can actually see what i'm drawing dark way is the road looks like dirk way my dagger um to 40c you may go into the wilderness by going south to 48b Okay. To the north, the rogue route will take you to the Black Dragon Tavern. I remember that place is fun. Maybe I should go there. Rogue. Black Dragon Tavern. Um, for those of you who are of a religious bent, you find your interests lie to the west on the Ranger Road. Ranger Road. Okay, I, yeah, I, I kind of already made my mind up. I want to go to the Black Dragon Tavern. That place is fun, if I recall correctly. Of course, it is dangerous as well. It wouldn't be the City of Terrors if it wasn't dangerous. Thanks for joining me tonight, folks. It's always fun to play some games with you all. But yeah, if you, Rob, Bob, have any other ideas aside from what I say, or anybody in the chat, feel free to shout it out. I'm not the only boss mm -hmm. here. Um, where am I going? Let's see. 32A. That's just the previous page. Here we go. We're in our... You can tell these, these are friendly folks. And uh, as a rule, by the way, if you aren't sure who drew some of this artwork, Liz Danforth's art looks like this. The characters tend to look, even the ones who aren't elves, tend to look elven, and they have expressive faces, and they're always, they're always taking, they're always doing some kind of an action. They're not just like standing there. This one's eating a pear. You can tell they're having a conversation. 
Um, she does throw their bulges sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Rob Carver. Everybody Rob Carver does has about 8,000 wrinkles, and they're all very sinewy and uh, <laughs> nasty looking. So this is a Rob Carver illustration. And this is Liz Danforth. <laughs> I kind of like Rob Carver's too. Anyway, Dan says, the kid in me sees the black and white pics and makes me want to break out crayons, color pencils, and... <laughs> Color pencil and markers to color. That could be fun. <laughs> All right. In front of you is a tavern. We're at 32A. The sign above it announces that this is the famed... <clears throat> excuse me. My throat's not doing well tonight. This is the famed Black Dragon Tavern. When you enter, you see that the Black Dragon offers to its customers nearly all the various modes of entertainment known to man. All right, so we got an arcade here. We can play Tunnels and Trolls here. You can play the one-armed bandit in the corner. I didn't know what that was when I was a kid. I thought it literally meant there was a um, like a, a bandit who's you know a person who steals things and he only has one arm. But that refers to a slot machine. That's a term I learned later. You may arm wrestle with the man on your left, 18C, or play poker with some tufts in the back room, 20A. Of course, you can drink, 6D. Or leave the tavern and return to the city square at 33C. All right, I'm letting you guys call it. What do you think, Rob Bob, or people in the chat? Um, I guess you could drink. All right, let's drink. Rob, has, Rob Bob has a vote for drinking. Anybody else in the chat have a vote? That would be 6D. Okay. All right, Dan says get drunk. We're going to go with that then. 6D. At the bar are two orcs. Oh, good. What could go wrong? I'm gonna go drinking with some orcs. At the bar are two orcs. They have had a few, and they are making comments about you. They say that your roots would doubtlessly lead you to a kennel. That means they're saying my mom's a dog. Got it. If you would like to fight them, go to 50A. If you wish to hit them with an oh, go away spell, go to 17. No, I'm a warrior. I don't have spells. If you wish to ignore them and finish your drink, go to 15. Yeah, I think um, I think these, this is the picture of this paragraph. And you can tell this is Rob Carver again. These two orcs are like, hey, get over this guy. And I'm like, oh, geez, these guys are jerks. All right, what should we do? Fight him? <laughs> I, oh, I, think, I say we fight him. We might die right here. So let's go for it. We can always rewind. Or re-roll a character. No, at this point, I'd rather just re reuse the character. Spend so much time rolling him up. Okay, we're going to fight some drunk orcs. A pair of drunken orcs with my level 2 human warrior. <laughs> what could go wrong already? In an adventure that's known to be dangerous, too. You draw your weapon... And they run. To run after them and engage them in battle, go to 49E. To follow them and see where they're going, go to 56A. To make a prudent retreat of your own, go to 33C. Well, I feel like it might be a trap. They're going to lead me to something. 56A says Eric Johnson. That might be a good idea. We're going to kind of follow them, but not like rush into battle. I guess that's the idea. Just kind of creep behind them. Quick, Dan says, quick, create a safe state beforehand. Yeah. The safe state is all I have to do is write down what paragraph I was at. <laughs> all right, I'm going to uh, follow them and see where they're going, as Eric suggested. 56A. I think that might be the last page. Oh, by the way, this is a um a drawing. I forgot to show this. Of all the characters who can appear from the Wandering uh, Persons deck. Has this, this is obviously Rob Carver again. Um, You know, you have... Some of this kind of makes more sense if you if you've seen all the characters in the deck, like this guy is is uh, Dar the bully, this big ugly balding guy, and Mardok the medic is talking to him. He looks like the little guy from Game of Thrones or something. What's his name? Um, Tyrion Lannister. He could be a Tyrion Lannister. Um, there used to be a uh, <laughs> a naked female slave right here, 
They replaced her with artwork from another TNT adventure because apparently the female who was proof, I mean, the woman who was proofreading this edition of the game was like, I can't believe you have a topless woman in here and they're talking about buying her and stuff like that. Could you please edit this? And they were like, yeah, I guess you're right. So they did that. And uh, they changed what he says here. This is Mingor Diamond Fist. He has a diamond for a fist. He says, think she joined us on that mission to Dungeon of the Bear, to which the wizard guy, whatever his name is, says Fat Chance. Before, I think it was something like, think she would let me buy her for 70 gold or something like that. <laughs> so they changed that. Um, here's somebody yelling to Nathan the tax collector. I don't know what he's yelling. Oh, here we go. Nathan the tax collector says, "Hey, you, Pietra, stop! That's the state taxes. Pietra the pickpocket is down here. He stole the tax money from the tax collector. And this guy, I don't remember who he is, says, Ah, Nathan, that's ten percent more to be spent in my shops. What else should we go over here? She's saying some random token runes because I guess she's supposed to be some kind of a foreigner or alien or whatever. Uh, this must be the slaver guy. He says, "Careful, Jokar. She'll cleave you in two. That's where, in response to him saying, where did you come from, beautiful? <laughs> They're still kind of being gross, but I guess <laughs> I guess in the prior edition, it was a bit much. And it doesn't take away anything here, you know, the ed editorial choices. But I was reminded that it did say you should read over this section here. I'll, I'll tell us that in the intro, so maybe I'll do that now. Then I'll revert to whatever paragraph we're supposed to be at, which <laughs> I can't remember. Was it 55-something? Maybe I should find that. 55A, was it? No. no. Okay. Um, I'll have to look. I'll have to rewind my stream to find out what paragraph I'm supposed to go to. I went on a tangent there. But anyway, let's check out the wandering people paragraph. Actually, if anybody else would wouldn't mind telling me which paragraph. I'm supposed to be at while I go over this wandering people text. Just rewind like two minutes or so. I would appreciate that. Wandering people. In this adventure, we have wandering people instead of wandering monsters. That was like a revolutionary thing. Hey, they could they can be people, not just not just monsters. This list is a motley crew that one might find in the city, in a city the size of Gull. These creatures have their attributes written out. You may want to make up cards for many of them as well and include them um, among the other wandering people. Excuse me. You should make up a character card for all the people below. Put the cards in a pile face down. And when you meet a wandering person, which is every time you come to an intersection of roads while in the adventure and any other time you are specifically instructed to do so. Eric says 56. Oh, that's from before. That's right. Okay. Yeah, we got it. All right. Sorry, I'm dumb. Eric suggested 56A last time, so we know that's where we have to go. Uh, anyway, it's just saying you draw the cards. You make the cards, you draw them. But each character on the deck has certain symbols. MF is monster fodder. These are characters that go around unarmed and are worth about 25 experience points to anyone who kills them. By the way, adventure points and experience points are interchangeable in this game. They're officially called adventure points, but most of the, or some of the, Solo authors call them experience points because I guess they couldn't get out of that habit from D&D. &D. <laughs> uh, ZZ is a bully type. Will only attack if he has a friend there or is clearly stronger than the person he faces. Um, now, 56A is the one I wanted to go to. I want to just um, uh, follow them without attacking. And Dan said it's 50A, 50A if I wanted to fight, though. Thanks, Dan. Perilous P. These are scoundrels and thieves, but they are quite dangerous. They can kill and should be regarded with caution. AA is always attack. These are really rotten characters who ought to be killed. Would you want one to marry your sister? CA is conditional attack. Mostly good people will attack if provoked. MT is monster tough. Monsters ought to find these characters rather tough to deal with. If a monster kills one of these, he should get three times the 12th experience. In it. I don't know what they're talking about. I guess if you want to use the monsters, monsters rules and play as a monster you get more experience for some reason. And here's all their definitions, like Nathan the Tax Collector, Mardok the Medic, etc. Okay. So that's that. Now we're going to head back to 56A to follow the orcs. Ran away. I mean, they I, they shouldn't be afraid of me, so I feel like they're probably leading me into a trap. I don't remember specifically. Like, I haven't played this in so many years. 
I can barely remember anything except a, cute, a few a few cool things like when you you uh fight the the time god Kronos Kronos here which is extremely <laughs> extremely tough anyway you follow them to the seaside section of town this is the orcs we're talking about they enter an old building that looks decrepit both decrepit and and dismal if you wish to call it a night, you may go to 33C. If you want to sally forth and go adventuring, go to 46C. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's sally forth. 33C is where I started, I think. It's the town square. Stu says, if I was an orc, I wouldn't mess with you. If you were an orc. I mean, those are two big brutish orcs talking trash about me that you would think they'd be ready to fight. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, this is this is the game screwing you over. Man, I might have to fix my my arms to this thing again. My uh, book stand. You should have called it an evening. You ru you just rushed into the building. Well, I didn't want to rush in. I want I want to kind of creep around. Anyway, fine, didn't have that option. You just rushed into a building where fifty orcs were preparing to go join a larger group of orcs to help raise the city. Make a saving will unlock three levels above your own. Holy shit. Sorry, excuse my language. If you make it, you saw them before they saw you, and you were able to make a strategic withdrawal. Go to 33C. If you didn't make it, you've just become what is known as monster fodder. <laughs> is that them? I guess so. Okay, well, for those who aren't too familiar with the mechanics of this game, that's going to be a tough roll, but not impossible. It's saying I have to make a saving roll. Unlock <coughs> three levels above mine. I'm level two. That means I need a to make a level five saving roll. Now, let me tell you how that works. So my character has 12 luck, right? And... Um, a level one saving roll means you need to roll on two dice, doubles add and roll over, so you can you can you can snowball your rolls, but a level one roll would mean I have to roll twenty minus my luck of twelve or an eight or higher on the two dice. For every level of the saving roll above that, the number increases by five. So that <laughs> usually they don't go that high very often, but uh, so twenty five would be level two, thirty level three. 35 level 4, 40 level 5. So 40 minus 12 is 28 or higher on two dice I have to roll. <laughs> Which, again, the doubles add and re-roll, though. Stu says, well, Mark, have a good night. I guess you're just mocking my death more than you're saying you're actually leaving. Um, but you know what? Again, I just rolled the character and basically just started, so I'll um, I'll just reset him or back out of this choice or something. Were you going to say something, Rob Bob? I heard you breathing. Uh, no. You are just going to say I'm dead? Should we break out the lucky saving roll dice? Let's do it. Yeah. One time Santa You're Claus. Gonna need him. All right. Gonna need him, yeah. You're going to need him. One time Santa Claus bestowed upon Rob Bob when he was younger these luck. We call them the lucky saving roll dice because they're golden. They're not really made of gold, obviously. But um, yeah, when we're like, oh, crap, I really need to make the saving roll. We sometimes pull these out. And it doesn't usually save us, but we're going to try. So what we need is, a, when I say a 28 or higher, that basically means we need a whole lot of doubles, like a 12 followed by a 10, and that's not even enough right there. Anyway, here we go. Let's get them doubles. Double. Okay, a six with no doubles, so we, we died. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm dead. If, um... If Lago Mosker is still here, you had your, uh, you know, if you were taking bets or whatever, uh, <laughs> how many paragraphs in did it take? Not many. It did take a while into the stream because I took my time getting started and everything. But yeah, not far into the adventure. So let's, uh, let's go back to when we had a choice to attack them or not. Dan said it was 56. No, Eric said it was 56A to follow and 50A if I wanted to fight. We're going to rewind and say we're going to fight them. This might not be smart either, but well, it's better than instant death, right? Unless this is also an instant death. Um, although you know, technically I can I can go to that special paragraph where I have a chance 
to redeem myself when I die, but I'm just going to rewind. Ew, save state. And we're going to 50A to attack the two orcs. If we can catch them. Oh, 50A was where I was. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, to attack and charge them in, you know, charge into battle with them is 49E. Yeah, they're going to kill me too. Okay. <laughs> I should have made my character stronger. I was like, you know, using my my special house rule about rolling up a, a more powerful character, but I wanted to keep it not too crazy to start, but I, I'm seeing I should have done that. <laughs> because look, these orcs hear you and turn to fight. Orcs hear you and turn to fight. They each have an MR of 40. That's their monster rating. There are two of them. If you kill them, roll one die and multiply by 50 to see how many gold pieces each one was carrying. That's pretty good, though. But I'm not going to survive that. Um, so monster rating is a neat little mechanic in Tell's and Trolls that kind of wraps up in one single number how many hit points they have as well as how well they roll in combat. And the way it is, is you take... It sounds a little complicated when you explain it, but you get used to it. Take off that last digit and add one. That's how many dice they roll. So each one rolls five dice. That's ten dice altogether versus my eight dice. But remember I have adds of 15? Well, the monster rating also encapsulates adds. And the, the idea is half the MR, half the monster rating is the add. So each one adds 20. <laughs> uh, they get ten dice plus... 40 versus my eight dice plus 15. There's, there's simply no way. And well, it's do I want to? I mean, I could play it out for the fun of it. Let's let's do that. I mean, there, there's mathematically no way though. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it might be fun to illustrate the combat to those who aren't used to it. And then I have to decide how I want to cheat next. And Dan the Man says. Tiger Man would have easily beaten the <laughs> Maybe I'll re-roll the character and use my uh my house rule to beef him up to like level four or something instead of two. Why am I so weak, sis? Too? Yeah, because I decided a level two guy should be good enough to start with. That's that was my failing. Alright, let's um You know, in the intro they say you should be a mid-level character, right? So really I was coming into it over underpowered probably. All right, so let's uh, draw it out. Oh, we got these orcs. Um, orc 1, orc 2. They have their MRs of 40 each. <laughs> and they roll a total. Well, each one rolls 5 dice plus 20. And I roll 8 dice plus um, 15. So yeah, if it was only one of them. Now, I could play, you know... It's also encouraged by Ken himself, and this is how I like to play sometimes. Is if you can think of a good in-game explanation for it, give yourself a special saving roll. Like I played recently on one of my videos, recently like a year ago now, where I was being attacked by three uh, vampire ladies, and actually the the text told you know the, the text told me from before that there was a a wooden dagger on the floor from a previous vampire that I had slain. But I did the math and I was overwhelmed. You know, it was kind of like this. There's no way I'm going to beat him. So I gave myself an opportunity. I said, all right, let's say I pick up the wooden dagger on the ground and I fling it at one of the vampire ladies. I'll give myself a dexterity saving roll and I'll make it hard. Don't make it easy. And if I happen to make that roll, I have flung the wooden dagger right through one of the vampire's hearts and I kill them. So I did that and I pulled it off. And <laughs> you know, it's kind of like just making stuff up to to give yourself opportunities. And, you know, it sounds cheesy, but Ken St. Andre himself replied to my video. He said, that's the way to do it. Make the game your own. Have fun with it. Improvise. So <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, but in this case, I don't know. I just feel like I, I don't really have any in-game uh, rationale. I think I just need a tougher character. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing this like every other paragraph. Um, but let's roll, roll, roll it out for the heck of it just to show how this goes. So... How this goes is I'm going to roll 10 dice for them. Find 10 black dice because of their black hearts. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> and I'll get... uh Yeah, you roll a ton of dice in this game, by the way. 
And I'll use different colored dice for me. I guess I'll use the white ones I've already been using. Eight dice plus 15. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And this is how it goes. Watch this. So, Dan the Man says, plus tigers are super stealthy, so he would have been able to sneak away from the 50 orcs easily with advantage of the stealth luck roll. Making my own tiger rules now. <laughs> you could do that, Dan. You make your own tiger rules. And Stu says, that's amazing. He replied to you. How do you think he found it? Well, I share these videos with the... There's two main um, Tunnels and Trolls related Facebook groups, and it's kind of a tight-knit community. Like, you know, so... And Ken posts in both of them. And, you know, he's actually watched all my videos, and he makes, you know, he makes cracks about them. Sometimes he gets upset. If I if I play the game wrong, not upset, but he criticizes my play if I get some rules wrong or something. Um, there was one adventure in which I um, <laughs> I, I had a, a special adult encounter with a a, a a lamia, which is like a snake woman, and he replied to it. I'm going to show you his reply. Let me try to find that quick. Uh, bear with me a minute. It's kind of hilarious. I can show it to you though. It, um, close encounter with the snake kind. He made some kind of crack like that. Uh, is this the one though? No, that's not the one. All right, bear with me a second. This is, this is gonna be worth it. Worth my stumbling around looking for the, the video. It's gonna be funny. I think this is the one. All right, let me see. Yep, here we go. So I, hey, I had a special encounter and I'll uh, share my screen in a moment. Sharing my web browser. All right. So here you go. Can't see it too well. Let's make that smaller. But essentially, yeah, I, I, I had an encounter with a snake woman. And, uh... We talked to Lamia. She invites you to come back with her to her sleeping chambers for a little romance. And then he replied down here. I loved your video, Snake Lover. <laughs> it made me laugh. You did well in leaving things to your imagination. You only muffed one thing. 65 minus 24 equals 41, not 51. Yeah, I made a math error. It, I'm always doing that. Anyway, that's him, though. He apparently called himself Gristle Grimmer now. But he says, I love your video, Snake Lover. <laughs> Kind of funny. Anyway. Uh yeah, so let's roll these dice that are gonna uh destroy me. Um did I already roll them? No, I did not roll anything yet, right? Alright, so here we go. Ten dice plus forty essentially for the orc. So what you do is you well, that's actually a terrible roll for uh eh, pretty bad. But it doesn't matter, they're gonna own me anyway. So ten, twenty, you add them all all it's, it's crazy. It's a matter of it's the amount of adding you do is crazy, but I'm used to it, I like it. 20, 25, uh, plus 4 is 29. So they roll a 29 plus their add the 40. So their total is 69. Yeah, here come the jokes. And the idea is, can I possibly beat a 69 with my rolls? No. But there's also a special rule where it, for every 6 roll, which didn't happen here actually, which is kind of surprising, um, one point of damage gets through regardless, essentially. So... That kind of helps break up stalemates or makes it so that, you know, even if you're really overpowered, a weaker enemy can get some small hits on you occasionally. Um, but that was the orcs roll. And now I'm going to roll my 8 dice plus 15 and get murdered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here it goes. At least I got a couple 6s, so I did 2 damage to them before I die now. Um, but 10, 20, 30 plus 15 is 45. So how this works is you simply take the difference. So I take 24 damage. You look at my character sheet. I have four damage that can be soaked up by the breastplate, so it becomes 20. If I use that special warrior ability I have to double the effectiveness of my armor for a round, it becomes 16. And that damage comes directly off my constitution though so i take 16 damage bringing me to negative three and i am dead <laughs> so so that's how it goes 
Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to play this now. I obviously need a stronger character. I could roll up a new one, or I could try to level up this one using my, my house rule. Should I just roll up a new one? What do you guys think? You know, I, I'll, I'll enhance this one. Let's enhance this one. We're going to start over. We're going to give him uh, maybe an extra level. Probably needs two levels. Um, let's make him level four. Let's do that. Speedy Gonzalez is now level four. <laughs> he, uh, he, we're rewinding. The god Kronos is uh, taking pity on us and let us, letting us travel back through time and get stronger. All right, level four. So my rule again is you choose a level and then you choose an attribute to set to level times 10, essentially. So our strength is now 40. We are very strong. That represents the level that you've been focusing, the attribute that you've been focusing on leveling up as you accumulate adventure points, which you spend to uh, advance these attributes. And since I gained two more levels, I'm going to give myself two more dice of points to assign to other attributes besides strength. That's eight. All right, I'll give myself some more. At uh, perhaps luck. Why don't we say four each in luck and constitution? That should be fun. That should be good. Okay, so we're stronger now. Um, <laughs> we still probably get owned by those orcs, honestly. But now our ads are. From strength are increased by 20 and four from the luck boost I gave. So 24 more ads. Our ads are now 39. I guess going by the same token, I should have two dice times 10 extra gold as well. At 16, I should use the Ken's double the end roll over. Now let's go with that. We have 74 gold. And we can spend that on something. Uh, yeah, what else can we buy? Though? I don't know. I feel like I'm still not going to be... I would still get owned by those particular orcs, but at least I'm probably in a better place generally in this adventure. Sorry, I don't want that thing here. Um, <laughs> You really want me to be the tiger, man, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to stay with the human for now. I, By the way, I think I was... uh. I was allowed to re-roll that saving roll because I'm a human. I forgot that. I don't think it would have mattered, but that's the human ability. I got to remember. It's easy to forget these things sometimes. Lionel for Thundercats. Yes, that's how I should be. Um, I don't know. Should I check the manual if I can buy anything else? Cool. Excuse me. Maybe I could get a better second weapon or something. Get a couple of extra dice on my... Late. By the way, because I am two levels higher as a warrior, I'm going to roll two extra dice in combat. So even if I don't upgrade weapons, I'll be doing better. But um, I probably want to get something instead of that Dirk, maybe. Um, I mean, you know what? I should, I should have upgraded Dexterity so I could actually dual wield something better. Anyway, let's see what I got. Scimitar. Yeah, Dexterity required, required two. Uh, Twelve, I mean. So I have 14 Dexterity. That means I can't really... Dual wield, dual wield much better than that. Um, we get just one big fat two handed weapon or something. It usually doesn't work, it usually doesn't work as well, though. Mm. Maybe I should have leveled up dexterity instead of constitution. Let's go with that. I'm gonna put my, I don't know if that's gonna make a huge difference. Let's do it anyway. I'm moving those four points in constitution. To dexterity, so my dexterity is 18. It also gives me four extra ads. So I have 43 ads. But I'm mostly thinking about I want to be able to dual wield a little better. So again, you, you add up the dexterity requirements. If I'm using a scimitar, that's 12, and I would, could use six more, which is still the, I'm still pretty limited, aren't I? I could always ditch the... I don't have to use a scimitar. I could always say I'm trading in those... Um... What well, looks good if I had it as a pair here? Some of the weapons will be, you know, real, ridiculous. Realistically speaking, as a as a pair, like a mace and a 
a trident together. Like, <laughs> how do you how do you do that? But I could do it in this game. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna open the the, the great big manual to get more of a a more complete list, more fine grained options, so to speak. Um, why is this focus so terrible? Huh. All right, here comes the, the big beefy manual, folks. Let's find some weapons, baby. You know, they actually have guns in this game. You can buy guns. <laughs> like a hand cannon. Bear with me if this is ugly for a minute. Uh... We can get spears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could use a. Some of these spears are 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 actually one handed. Even I think the. Is this a double diamond that means they're two handed? I I can't remember. What does a single diamond mean then? <laughs> Let's say early on in this section. Apologize. Apologies for being a bit uh, awkward about this at the moment. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Get in place, Stan. Come on. I'm going skiing, yeah. I could get a... Um, I don't know. Most of my options don't look that fantastic. I could probably get myself one extra die or two, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to see what those diamonds mean. Double diamond must be used with two hands. Okay. Weapon listed with a single diamond might be one or two handed. Yeah, I'll, I'll ignore that then. Are you going skiing? What I have is a... Uh, the medium... See, the way this works is it has them like organized by like types. Like, you know, medium standard sword. Kind of like as a general category. But then you pick the, you pick the specific kind. And there's like no difference between them. Um, what if I got a long sword for five dice? That alone that alone requires 18 dexterity. So that would be my my limit there. Hmm. Hafted weapon that could get an axe of some sort. Uh Heavy axe, 18 strength and 10 dexterity. I could use a heavy axe, which is apparently one-handed even. So I, <laughs> I could use that and uh, maybe... Uh, why not two of them? No, I don't have the dexterity. Um, I could use a hatchet and a heavy axe. That would be nine dice altogether. Is that, is that, that sounds funny, though. I kind of like the idea of that because it's amusing. Can I afford it, though? No, not really. 103 gold. You know what? I'm just gonna uh, upgrade my Dirk to a um, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank here. How about this X? Can I use two? I can. I can use two of these. How about these two five dice axes? That'd be awesome because I have the dexterity requirement because two of them would be nine plus nine, 18. I can just barely do that. And the cost is 73. So I'm going to say I didn't buy the, the scimitar and jerk and the scimitar would give me 66 back. The jerk gives me, I think, 10 or something like that. I'll just estimate it's that. So I get 76 back and I have 74 now. I can pretty much just barely get two axes there. All right, I'm doing that. I'm going to use two axes. And you can choose the kind if just for flavor if you want. How about two war shovels? I don't know what a war shovel is, but that sounds fun. It sounds fun. Or, or two uh, two woodsman axes. All right, so I'm doing that. And I'm just kind of... I'm, I'm kind of estimating with the gold right now. I don't feel like doing the math. I'm going to say I have like five left, which sounds about right, or ten left. 
and have two axes worth five dice each. And um, because I'm a warrior and I'm level four, I add four dice for being level four to my roll. So essentially, I roll 10 dice for the two axes plus four for being a warrior. 14 dice is pretty good. I think I could take those orcs now. <laughs> I think I could actually, because they would be 10 dice plus 40 versus my 14 dice plus 43. I'm going to go get revenge. I'm going to kill the orcs. <laughs> just as a, um, just as they were about to kill me, suddenly I leveled up. I'm like, <laughs> and my scimitar and Dirk transformed before their eyes into a, a pair of axes. <laughs> And I'm going in. All right. That's what we're doing. That's what I'm, that's my story. I'm sticking to it or something. So yeah, here we go. The two orcs here you in turn to fight. They each have MR of 40. There are two of them. If you kill them, roll one. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Back to the overhead camera. And Speedy Gonzalez, the human warrior who's wielding two axes, is going to take out these orcs this time. Now, you, you can see I'm obviously taking some liberties here. But when we played this back in the day, what we would do is we would advance characters. You know, this this would be like me and my... I would either play this by myself or sometimes my uh, my brother would be playing his own games in the same room. The neighborhood friend would be doing it too. We'd all be leveling up our own characters and solos. We would know the paths through some like various, you know, correct paths to go, or at least pretty good paths. We didn't have it all memorized. In other adventures, for example, we'd play the level one warrior adventure called Buffalo Castle. And we'd build up the characters and take that, you know, level slightly level up character through another one like Death Trap Equalizer. And then, you know, he'd get a little more powerful. And then maybe we'd put them in City of Terrors. And if someone died, you know, unmercilessly, then oh well. <laughs> but uh that's that's what we do. We would level up and we would keep each other on it sometimes when we were all hanging out in the same room playing like, ah, oh, you can't cheat. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> we like took it very seriously. Um but as you can see now, you know, I, I don't have time to, to level up my character through five adventures before playing in this one and then, you know, hopefully not dying. But, uh, so I'm taking some liberty. Anyway, I got 14 dice plus 43 now. I'm going to take them out. But this is the thing. It's not a foregone conclusion. And also they might deal out some uh, spite damage. Every six they roll... It's going to take one damage directly off my constitution despite the, despite my armor. So let's break out the 10 orc dice again. I will roll them first once more. But, um, let's count it, verify that it's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus 40. They did get one, uh, two spite off the bat. Alright, so they got 10... 20. I like, as you can see, I like to count in tens when possible. 30, 37 plus their 40 adds is 77. And 2 spite. I'm just going to write 2 in parentheses. But now I am more badass than before. Fourteen dice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12. I need different colors. 13, 14. Dan says, some liberties for live streaming sake is fine. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> kind of makes sense. All right. I'm going to roll all these dice now and add 43. Let's see if I can do that. I'm saying like I'm actually saying it. see if I can physically roll this many dice is what I'm talking about. Oh, it's pretty pretty bad roll, a lot of ones. All right, let's see what I'll see what I get. Um 10 20 30 36 Did I do that right? This is 20 over there. Um, 
30. Okay. I think I messed up before. 10, 20, 30, 36, 42. Yeah. 42 plus 43 is uh, 85. And I rolled two spies as well. But essentially what happens is because I won the combat, uh, we take the difference. They're going to take eight damage. And unfortunately, I'm going to take two from the spite. So I have 11 constitution left. And you can see I didn't totally dominate them. So unfortunately, they might just nick me to death with spite. Yeah, five ones kind of sucked, Eric. That's for Hopefully, I'll roll better next time. Uh, what are they taking? Eight damage. So we're just going to cross it off equally. So thir 36 and 36. Now, the nice thing is, um, you know, in the, in the older versions, they used to make it simpler. You would just redo the dice and adds as you knock down their monster rating. But apparently people found it was too, uh, I don't know, made, made it too easy or something or like they, they didn't like it. So you keep the, the way it works now. And it's a little bit of a mouthful to explain, but you keep the, the original dice which is from based on the 40 monster rating, but you reduce the add. So you just, you reduce part of it. So in other words, they're going to have adds of 18 each. Which is helpful though. They're getting worse at fighting as I damage them. And I don't get worse at fighting as I get damaged because I don't use MR. Anyway, next round. Yeah, I'm going to just leave all these dice in here and the black dice for the orcs are coming out. So again, 10 dice. Plus, but the now it's 36 instead of 40. They got three spite this time. Dope. Okay. Um, 10. 20. 20. They rolled really well. 30. Exactly 40 with three spite. 40 plus uh, 36 is 76. So basically only one less than last time, but with three spite. Hopefully I can roll better, though. It looks better than last time, at least. This is a 10. I'm just looking for patterns to make 10 all the time. 20. Uh... No ones, huh? Probably a good thing, though. 30. <clears throat> 40. 46. 48. 50. All right, so I got 50 plus 43 is 93. And my spite doesn't really matter. So I damage them for a good uh, 17 damage, because 93 minus 76 is 17. And they they take they do three spite damage to me unfortunately so I'm down to eight constitution I actually am getting quite beat up already even though I'm gonna win the fight I think um, they take um what did I say seventeen yeah so we'll take um nine off one to eight off the other actually, I still don't know if I'm gonna win this they might just get in enough spite took eight off him nine off that one uh, but their ads are reduced. 14 and 14, I believe you round up. So they get 10 dice plus 28 now. The sixes, man. <laughs> okay. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41. And the three spite, 41 plus uh, 28. A lot of math in this game. You have to be good at the arithmetic. Um, what did I say? 41 plus 20 is 69. And three spite. I actually attribute my fascination with Tunnels and Trolls back in the day with actually <laughs> my ability to actually do some arithmetic pretty well in my head. Although I feel like as I age, I'm worse at, worse at it, but that's that's okay. But yeah, like I also like adding to your experience points totally, your adventure points. I'd be like, you know, oh, I gotta 
I have 153 experience points, but I have to add 27 to them. So, you know, I would get good at that after doing it enough. Anyway, yeah, at the, at the rate, did I already take my three spike? No, I didn't, I didn't finish the round yet. Okay, once again, I'm <laughs> rolling crappy. Dan says, stronger character, only way to progress in the story with an adventure of this high level difficulty. Sadly funny, if you still die, then shop for better armor, I guess. Yeah, I'm thinking the, the spite doesn't stop the armor. But, uh, wow, another crappy roll for me. So, I mean, you know, it's not all bad, but you see all those one. Did I just turn and die? I don't know. I'm going with whatever I had. 10, 20, 30, 39. Plus 43 is 82. That's my worst roll yet, but the damage looks like it's 13, but I take 3. Oof. I'm down to 5. And uh, 13 means 1 takes 7 and 1 takes 6. I'm supposed to kind of make it equal. 21, 21. So their ads are down to 11 each, but they're still rolling 10 dice and getting pretty good rolls with the spite and they only have five i can only take five um well i'm dead unless there's a six uh i'm i'm dead on five rolls of six succession so i just need a really good round or probably two rounds if i had two really good rounds i could probably finish them at this rate though i don't know i might lose even though i'm beefed up I have to get the magical armor that stops fight. <laughs> I'm making that up. While there could be something like that theoretically in this game, because that you know nothing is off limits pretty much in this game. But you know, really, spite is supposed to be well. It gets through all armor because we don't want some of these battles to take forever. All right, no spite. Look at that. That's great. That's fantastic. That's what I need. No spite from them. Ten. Uh, Twenty. 30, 35, plus their 22. 35 plus 22 is 57, right? 30. Yep, and no spite. Cool, that's good. This is this is my chance to really hammer them hard without taking any damage. I don't think I'm going to kill them this round, but with a good roll, I might, I might knock them down pretty hard at least. All right, not terrible. 10, 20, 30, 40. This one's not, I didn't count yet. So 40, 44. Again, plus the ads of 43 makes it 77. Is that really, is that really my worst roll yet? Is my math right here? One, two. Gonna review it again just to be sure. Like, oh, it doesn't seem like it was my worst roll yet, but maybe it doesn't matter. 10, or maybe it just is, you know. 10, 20, 30, 40, 44. Yeah, I guess it is. Oh, I'm, I can't math. That's an 87, not a 77. Yeah, I always do this kind of a thing lately, which is why Ken in my last comment that I showed was like, oh, you messed up this math. Um, I'm just not. As, a, as I'm aging, I just sometimes, like, you know, I don't carry a one or something in my head uh, sometimes. So it is a little challenging to resolve these combats. Dan says, no weapon, armor, or character strength can make up for a bad rolling night. I've had those before, unfortunately. It happens, yeah. <laughs> that could totally happen. It looks like uh, there's only one viewer at this point. Okay, <laughs> I guess that's you, Dan. Or maybe Arturo, because it doesn't, doesn't like to count him sometimes. 30 damage, because 87 minus 57. I mean, that's great. We do 15 each. They're down to 6 MR each. I think the next round should probably do it. Their ads are pretty low now. Uh, three ads each. It's just a matter of can they get in a little bit of spite to make me really weak. I mean, theoretically, they could roll five sixes and kill me right now. But let's see what happens. Move you to the side a little more. 
ouch, two sixes, but not the five they need to kill me, so that's good, I guess. 10, 20, 30, 36, plus a mere six is 42, right? Yeah, and two spite. Dan, do you play this particular game, or do you mean you mean bad rolls in general? I know you said you watched my TNT streams before, right? Maybe you do play this game. Um, and if so, what are your favorite solos? That would be good to know. But anyway, yeah, can I uh, kill them? Probably, yeah. All I need to do is beat them by um, 12, and I got this. Wow, it's a good roll, too. Okay. Pretty good, it looks like. 10... 20, 30, um, 40, 51, 55. <laughs> yeah, we got this. 55 plus 43 becomes 98, the best roll yet. And that is a solid 56 damage to them. And they cannot handle that. But I am not holding up that well either with my three constitution that is left. I do need to update that or uh, upgrade my constitution or otherwise heal up soon. But yeah, I killed them. It says roll one die. Put this aside. Uh, yeah, what is that here? Roll one die and multiply it by 50 to see how many gold pieces each one was carrying. Okay, so I get double that, I guess, right? I'll take that. Wow. So they were each carrying 250 gold and I have 500 now? Wow. <laughs> Maybe I want to exit and buy stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's that's nice. It says go to 33C. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So for adventure points by default, unless it tells you otherwise, you just get the monster rating in adventure points. So I get uh, 80 because they were there was two of them with MR40. And the way it, the way you spend adventure points is um essentially if you want to upgrade, for example, your dexterity of eighteen or any attribute of eighteen, it would cost one hundred and eighty adventure points. So you would add a zero to upgrade my strength by one would cost four hundred adventure points. To upgrade my IQ would cost one hundred and ten. So right now I could only really upgrade my crappy wizardry, which I don't even use as a warrior, but I would like to upgrade <laughs> probably my constitution. But really, I need something to heal me. How do you even get healed? In general, there's not really a rule for healing in this game. But I like to assume if I leave an adventure, I can rest until I'm fully healed. All right. So, yeah. Uh, okay. That's interesting. My, <laughs> my phone that I'm using as a camera is like, you're almost out of juice, even though it's plugged in the whole time I'm using it. All right. So I'm, I'm low on juice, apparently. I think that means how much how much time do I have here? Okay, we'll cross that bridge when I get there, I guess. Um Hope it doesn't run out. Yeah, I'm at 20% apparently. I don't know why it's uh not able to keep up with the, the maybe I should swap my, my cable. Maybe there's something wrong with the cable. I don't know. I don't really want to fiddle with it now though. Um Well, I can go into low power mode. Let me let me do that real quick. Bear with me a sec. Let's do that at least. Actually, being in low power mode might be enough to make it so I'm actually charging up, like instead of de depleting my, my battery at this point. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Dan the Man's had never played TNT, but played D and D. Mostly thinking of playing Hasbro's Hero Quest. Cool, that's cool. As a kid, and now occasionally with friends, it's like a faster paced D and D light. Lots of fun. Yeah, you can play. The old advanced hero quest. I never had the original one. I don't even know what the difference is, but I had advanced hero quest. My brother got that actually. My brother was always like the hugest game player slash purchaser in the household. So he's the one who actually bought TNT originally. And that's how I got into it. I got into a lot of things because of my brother uh, buying so much good stuff. <laughs> All right, so we're back at the city square. Um, let me review the rules about like going to your hotel. Um, what did it say in the beginning? 
Like, can I just heal up there automatically or something? Or sorry for the bad camera work for now, but let's see. Um, <laughs> this says between adventures, you may drop stuff off in your room, change your clothing, or exchange your weapon. And I don't think I can just say I'm magically healed, unfortunately. That means I'm going to be in trouble if I fight pretty much anything. Uh, well, I guess we're going to carry on. Um, we can go east on the dark way to 40C. We can always go back to the um, the Black Dragon Tavern. By the way, there's more to do there. Uh, why don't we do that? I'll go there and try something else. That should be fun. I'm going to go there and explore another option in the, in the Black Dragon Tower. Tavern, sorry. Um, you could always, you know, try to use the common sense when you replay an area. Like, you know, I'm not going to be fighting the orcs again, for example. So I I guess I'm going to skip the drinking option altogether then. You know, so, sometimes these adventures, you have to just kind of apply your own common sense rulings, even if it you know, doesn't say that. You, it doesn't say you can't fight the orcs again, you know. That's, that's kind of silly. Uh, why don't we, let's see, shall we do the arm wrestle? What do you think, Dan, or anybody else who might be watching? Let me know what you guys think is a cool option. Play the one-armed bandit 22E, arm wrestle with the man on your left for 18C. Yeah, do... What's that? Do, uh, the slot machine. Slot machine, one-armed bandit, says Rob Bob. All right, that's a good option. We're probably going to lose some money, but we'll try it. I think you can choose how much you put in. You probably have a chance of winning. Hello, Ahmed. No, we're not fighting Ahmed. Um, this one-armed bandit will work with only only with money of any type, not attributes. Wait, what? <laughs> How would it work with attributes? I don't get it. Like you put in your strength points? All right, anyway, write down your bet. When you're ready, go to 18B. All right, how much money do we want to put in? Uh, I don't know, one gold? <laughs> I'm going to put in one goal. That's what I'm saying. But I'm officially committing to and going to 18B. All right, now we have a, a fun little mini game here. That's cool. Let me get that here. Use the gold dice, says Dan the Man. Yeah, I have to roll three dice, though. I only have two gold dice. I'll have to pick another lucky color. Roll three dice. If you get a straight, three numbers in sequence, such as one, two, three, you win half again as much as you bet. If you get a pair, such as two, two, three, you double your bet. If you get a triple, such as five, 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 you get four times your bet. Play as long as you like, and when you are done, go to 9A. Remember, though, that money is its own reward. If you win here, you win cash, but not adventure points. Okay. Let's get all these dice out of the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is how TNT goes. You wind up with an enormous pile of dice. It's going to be fun to play around with a little bit. Um, I think the odds aren't really that great in your favor, though. I mean, I think they're not in your favor. But let's pick some funky looking dice. I got these dice for Christmas. I, I like to add these Chessex dice packs. They're um, 16 millimeter dice, 12 in a pack. And I, you know, I just add them onto my Amazon wish list and stuff, and people get them for me as gifts because nobody knows what they get me because I have weird tastes. But I always appreciate these. I like having these, this collection of uh, dice. And since I, I mostly just like D6s these days, you know, a lot of people who are into dice will get all the full polyhedral sets, and I have some of those too. And maybe because I just play this game so much, I generally just like getting D6. Anyway, let's, let's use these kind of fiery looking dice. I like them. It's called, um, what's the color called? Did I not open this one yet? Hmm. Oh, I think I did. I'm not sure why I can't pull it open. There's no la label covering the. Okay, there we go. We're just stuck. And what is it called? It's called, um, it doesn't have a name on it, huh? Oh, they usually do. The label just says they're six-sided dice. All right, anyway, whatever. Dan demands to never gamble on a bad rolling night. Vegas rules. Yeah, uh, that might be a, a good point, but I don't care. I'm just going to bet small stakes. So, I, so let's try to get, um yeah, triples. 
Hey, I got a pair, so I got double my bet. All right, so I, I just gained two gold. Nice. So I'm at 502. Now I'm going to be like a typical gambler and be gambler who's like, oh, I won something. I won a little bit, so that means I should go nuts. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bet 10. I'm getting nuts. Betting 10 gold. This is what, I, this is what I'm going to lose and then learn my lesson. 10 gold going into the one-armed bandit. Yeah, I lost it. Okay. <laughs> so I have 492 gold. Okay, one more time with two gold. That way I'll be at least an, at a, ni a nice even number of, of 490. Rather than the weird 492. I don't know. I'm trying to make it sound like losing money is a positive. All right. Yeah. Down to 490. Bet it all, says Dan. <laughs> no, I'm not going to bet it all. <laughs> there are. It's not really good odds. I mean, I don't have the math in my head right now, but straights are uncommon. So are triples. A pair is your best bet, really, but even that's. I guess a pair is pretty good. It's better than one six size. I don't know what it is offhand. I have to do the math. Anyway, it's a little fun diversion there. So yeah, you probably don't want to get too crazy with that betting. Okay. Um, play as long as you like. When you were done, go to nine A. I guess it's back at the entrance of the tavern. Oh no. Not something special that happens after this. Uh oh. Oh, wait, I think I'm getting mugged. You know, the City of Terrors is just not a nice place. That's why they call it the City of Terrors, I guess. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm going to do something else to try to squeeze out the juice of my uh, phone here, which I didn't expect this to happen at all. This is weird. Turn off my mic. I don't know why I was using my mic. I don't need that. Yeah. Take off. That. All right. Let's see if that helps. It might just be the case that I actually run out of juice on my phone and <laughs> then I'm done for the evening. Anyway, if you lost cash tonight at the games, go directly to 32A. If you were a winner, I guess I lost, right? Overall, I lost. It looks like if you win, you get mugged or something. By Marek the Master Rogue. Oh, I remember him. What's you that? never win. What's that? So you never win. Yeah, you never win. <laughs> You're better off losing. I think you can actually, you know, track him down or do something. So, you know, you could, you could I don't think it's necessarily you just, you just lose it and you're done. All right, so we're back at Mr. Pirate Face here. Hey, nice teeth. Um, I'm gonna choose arm wrestling with the man on your left at 18C. This is the arm wrestling with the scorpion. That it, that I recall. We saw the illustration of that earlier. The man you choose to arm wrestle says he would like to make it more interesting. He says he will match any bets you care to make, or he can think of other ways to make the contest exciting. Let's let's start doing the doing the boring method. Place a bet, five bait, and then we'll try his more interesting thing if it lets us. All right, write down the amount of your bet. Your arm wrestling opponent is named the Lux. What? <laughs> the Luxta. He has a strength of twenty-five, a constitution of forty, and thirty-one combat adds, making him a tough foe. I'm tougher, except that my con is very low right now. To wrestle him, you must treat it as if you were fighting barehanded. You each get 1d6 plus your combat edge. Okay. Fight damage knocks a point off, uh -oh. point off the loser level, regardless of who wins the combat round. A point off the loser level. Your loser level is half your current con, <laughs> and the Lixta's loser level is 20. So mine is, uh, I don't know how, usually we round up in TNT, so I guess I have 3 divided by 2 is 2. 
It's taken in wrestling. Do not come off your con. And it's only a measure of your endurance in this case. If you lose, compute the consequences and you may return to 32A. If you win, go to 30, 26B. All right. So, you know, I know how the mechanics of this work. I can bet accordingly. Didn't make me pick ahead of time. Um, so essentially, he has 31 ads and I have, what do I have? 40 something? I have 43. So on average, I'm going to wreck him. It's just if he gets too spite, he beats me. I think let's do it. It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm going to make it a non-trivial amount, a non-trivial bet too. Not like betting at all, but I'm going to go with 100. I'm going to bet 100. What do you think, Rob? Is that, is that crazy? Yeah. Yes, it's crazy? Okay. Well, I'm going to do it then, because Rob Bob thinks he's crazy. All right. Um... Yeah, so we're wrestling. Arm wrestling. Or not, yeah, we're arm wrestling, not full body wrestling. Arm wrestling. Let's make this bigger. So yeah, it's uh the loser level. So he he got 20 loser level. Well, LL. That's a strange term, but that's fine. And him. Me, I only have two, so really, yeah, it's all about if he rolls two spite, I'm I'm done. But statistically, I should be good, and I bet a hundred. I'll write it down. There's no going back from that. A lot. It's kind of interesting. A lot of uh, game books and solo adventures. Whenever you have to like bet something ahead of time, it tells you to write it down because they don't want you to just say, "Well, I'm betting a hundred and then, you know, if you write it down, you if you wrote it down, you're kind of faced with the fact of what you chose you can't just change it and say well maybe i only meant to bet 90 you know they're just trying to discourage cheating anyway um yeah so this is how it works uh i kind of like rolling just one die each now that seems like a nice change of pace uh, after the enormous number of dice earlier so we're gonna roll uh one for me and one for him it'll be red let's, let's break out a new a new die we'll get these um Let's see, how about uh how about these kind of purplish ones for for my arm wrestling opponent? All right, so we're just doing one die plus ads. I'm gonna roll them both at once. Okay, so he got two plus what were his ads? Um 31, so he got a 33. No, sorry, he got he got a three plus 31 is 34 versus my 45. So I beat him by 11, and there was no spite. And therefore, his loser level is now 9. So yeah, just, just need another round like that, and I've probably got him. Okay, no spite again, and I I got a, uh, what? I got a 47 versus his um, 34. So I won by 13. Yes, I have defeated him in the arm wrestling match now those rogues are gonna rob me probably right if you lose compute the consequences then you may return to 32a if you win go to 26b sorry i got my uh overhead thing going here 26b so oh man i'm gonna get accused of cheating now look at this Roll two dice. A two, four, or ten to twelve. Okay, so anything in the range of two to four or ten to twelve on two dice means that the Luxta accuses you of cheating. That jerk. He tosses the table aside and draws his weapon. It is a flamberge. Six dice plus one. He has leather armor, six hits, and combat adds 31. His constitution is 40. If he was stung, you'll notice the, oh that's that's making it more interesting, which we didn't do. With the scorpions. You'll notice he isn't hurt. Do you think he would play a game where he might lose and hurt himself? Ah. All right. So he would be the cheater in that case. Anyway, so 2 to 4 or 10 to 12. He accuses me of cheating. Look at this guy. Ah. All right. I thought I would just put this aside without standing it up with the arms, and that's not working for me. So. Okay. So. 
2 to 4 or 10 to 12, and he accuses me of cheating. Okay, a 6. That is not in either of those ranges, so he does not accuse me of cheating. If he doesn't accuse you of cheating, go to 32A. If you defeat him after he chooses, you go to 19. All right, so 32A. Oh, we're back at the um, we're back at the uh, entrance of the tavern again. Okay, I'm gonna do the arm wrestling this time with scorpions. I don't think there's any reason why I should uh, assume I can't do that again, so I will do that. To make it more interesting this time. Oh, I got my money back, right? I should have a. Uh, I should have won one hundred gold. I'm assuming he paid me out. I think they said that, or they just, or I can at least assume <laughs> that I'm getting paid because he didn't accuse me of cheating. And so I'm going to just gloss over um, the initial paragraph, make it more interesting. Ten A. All right, here's the arm wrestling illustration by. Liz Danforth. Well, I like one one of the things I like about her illustrations is, is everybody. In, I don't know some some fantasy illustrators will just draw like a boring generic character. He's just standing there. You know, it could be I don't know. Just, everybody always looks a little special in her artwork. They always look like they have something on their mind, or they're very expressive. And they're always doing something rather than just standing there. Like they, you know, these guys are standing there, but you can tell they're like gesturing and, you know, looking around and <laughs> probably chatting amongst themselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Anyway, 10A. This guy's idea is to put two scorpions on the table right where the wrist of the loser would touch. You know that the sting of the scorpion would take three points off your con. Oh, it's going to knock me out essentially. Or kill me. By the way, the rule in the game technically is that if you go to zero constitution, you're knocked out. But minus ten is minus ten is death. But it didn't always used to be that way, and um, it's generally assumed in a in the context of a solo. If they don't tell you how to handle that situation, you, that you're probably just dead. You pass out, and somebody kills you. I don't know. But to some degree, I think it's just they didn't want to update the old solo like for this one uh because in the old rules you would just die at zero so i'm just kind of playing it like that essentially unless game tells me otherwise but yeah it says essentially uh, i will die if i get stung by the scorpion you could go to skikor the healer oh that's good that, that reminds me i should try to find him well he's in this deck somewhere i actually haven't really gone but beyond that town square yet so i should I should probably, uh, after this arm wrestle, I will move on and try to try to find some people. I'll try to explore beyond that town square. At least. Anyway, people crowd around to watch. Go to 5B and ignore the first sentence. Why did you write the first sentence then? It's because there's multiple paths to get there. Oh, okay. It's the same arm wrestle uh, scenario, except they don't write down how much money I'm betting. That's why it says ignore the first sentence. Focus. Down in front. How's my charge doing? Let me <laughs> let me check that quick. Sorry. I've got him at 16%. Okay. <laughs> what else am I going to do here? Uh, I have to try something. If I use... um, if I turn off... Uh... Sorry, bear with me a second. Turn off Wi-Fi. Turn off cell service. I'm not using it like that. Hopefully this still works. It should. We still have a camera here? Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, it's being a little funky. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's weird. My phone is doing this. Hmm. Maybe I'm using. Uh, I don't want to get into technical diagnosing. Um. Anyway, so I'm doing the same thing. Same exact thing, except I'm going to read that. Subsequent paragraph differently, I guess. I guess it only matters if I if I lose, right? If I lose, I have to deal with the scorpion. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't actually 
use a real scorpion, as we learned. So this is kind of a waste of time. All right, whatever. Let's just roll anyway. He will be the black die. I will be the white. Okay, so no spite. And I beat him by what? <coughs> what did he roll again? Uh, he has 31 combat as, so he rolled a 33. Versus my um 44, so I beat him by 11. He has 9 loser level. All right, this time he got 36 versus my 45, so I beat him by 9 and no spite damage. So I beat him again. I won the arm wrestle again. I guess it's the same paragraph. He's going to, you know, potentially accuse me of cheating, etc. Yeah, so that wasn't really a wise choice. But let's roll the dice. Um, 2 to 4 or 10 to 12 means he accuses me of cheating. Oh, I got it. I rolled an 11, so that's in the cheating range. Okay, he accuses me of cheating. Now I have to fight him for real. Oh, this could kill me. Oh, man. It's everything can kill me, but... um. I mean, I'll definitely overpower him, but it's that spite. Six dice. Dan the Man says, is this gamble for money or just to stay alive? In this case, it was the scorpion. The loser would get poisoned, but as I learned from this paragraph, he doesn't actually uh, get hurt on his end because he, I don't know, he uh, he de-stingered de his scorpion or something like that. Just to interpret a little bit. But anyway, now I gotta fight him. Um, yeah, he might kill me with spite, fortunately, but let's roll. He's got Lamberger. That's how you pronounce that. Six dice plus one. So he's rolling six dice plus 32. I really gotta get healed. All right, what's this guy's name? Uh, De Deluxta. And this is the actual battle, not arm wrestling. He has 40 con and rolls six dice plus 32 altogether. All right, and I'm getting my usual 14 plus 43. I mean, I'm going to spank him. It's just, does he get in some bite damage enough to finish me off? So I will use black for him. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dice plus 32. His total, he got one spite and oof, is 10. 2023 20, plus 32 is 55. With the one spite. Hey, I gotta get healed so bad. Uh, hopefully, I can wreck him right now, though. Let's see if I can. Um, unfortunately, he does have the six hits of leather armor, so he's gonna soak up six hits every round, spite notwithstanding. Uh, what am I looking for? All the white dice and the two red is what I'm rolling. Let's make sure that's 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. Yeah, let's get some really good hits in here. I'm adding 43 to this. Okay, 10. 20. 30, and a bunch of little dice here. 40, 42, plus 43 is 85. I did 30 damage, uh, 24 because of his leather. So he's down to 16 con, but that one spite is the bad thing. Now I have two constitution left. And he could easily get two spite this next round, but if he doesn't, hopefully I'll finish him. I just don't know how I'm going to get healed. I have to find that one healer guy or just exit the adventure entirely, but that seems cheesy. You know, I might as well just, just keep playing. How's my battery going here? The battery might be my saved by the bell moment. <laughs> Sorry, my battery's out. I can't play anymore. I kind of hate that. I should be able to keep powering it while I'm... I don't know. Again, I don't want to get into diagnosing technical stuff, though. Oh, why, why did I do that? Still fighting. 
five, six. Come on, no spite, no spite, no whammies. You got one spite. Uh oh. Ten. Not two spite though. Twenty twenty one. Plus his thirty two is fifty three. Fifty three and one spite. Honestly, if my phone does go dead, I can just swap out through this overhead phone. Yeah, I'm using phones and not actual cameras. I mean, I do have good cameras in them these days. But yeah, I might have to forego one of the two cameras, essentially. <clears throat> or I could just call it a stream. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is for the win. I mean, I have to kill him here or I probably, <laughs> I'm probably going to die next round. Okay. That's our first 10. Oops, that was 10, 20. And um, 30, 40, 46. And again, that's uh, it's an 89. 89, so I deal 89 minus 53 damage, which is 36. That's enough to kill the, the jerk who accused me of cheating. Oof. Uh, even with the subtraction of six from this armor, by the way. Okay, so I killed him. Oof, oof, oof. With my one con left. Oh, move this stuff aside. <clears throat> 19D. All right, De La Costa was a rogue. From around his neck, you take a charm that will dispel any first-level magic cast upon you. And it will also reveal, by looking into it, the location of the person who cast the spell. Cool. I don't know how I, how I gathered that information, but cool. You recover two of a ruby that is worth 1,000 gold pieces. You notice as you walk by two orcs at the bar that the gem begins to get warm. You know that it is enchanted. It will warn when orcs are around by getting warmer. Now go to 9-8. That's pretty cool. We got to write that down. Unfortunately, that's the kind of thing that a solo has to support. So, in other words, if I, you know, play any other random solo with that ruby on, it's not going to do anything, unless they specifically say, "Well, if you have this ruby that does that, or if you have any means of being warned of orcs." <laughs> Spoiler alert! But uh... anyway, um, let's write it down. So, what do I have? Root. 1,000. It might be just worth selling that. 1,000 gold is great. 1,000 gold. Warns of orcs. I think I'm going to go. Okay. Rob Bob is out. Thanks for joining. Good night. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. See you. Okay. Uh, what else did I get? I got the rogue that dispels, yeah, rogue. Sorry, the um, the charm dispels. I'm just gonna write just dispels level one magic. C city of terrors, <laughs> paragraph 19d. I really need the more information, okay. I go to 9A. Yeah, I think I want to travel around a bit. Possible. I mean, I would really like to get healed. Um, don't have any means of healing. And Dan said, like I said, you should get something fantastic because of the crazy risk. Nice. Yeah, I actually only got that, though, because I beat him in combat. If he didn't accuse me of cheating, if he hadn't accused me of cheating, I wouldn't have actually gotten anything. <laughs> so it's kind of good. Uh-oh. Wait, 9A. Not oh, no. Oh man, this is happening. Oh. Okay. So this is happening. You lost cash tonight at the game. It did say go to 9A, right? Yeah, it did. All right, here we go. If you were a winner, you feel rough hands upon you the moment you step from the tavern. 
Suddenly your head feels like it is going to explode and colored lights dance before your eyes. Fortunately, it doesn't say you take a constitution of damage or I would be dead. And I didn't update my con. Uh, colored lights dance before your eyes. As you lapse into unconsciousness, you hear one of the attackers speak. Well, Marek, we did very well this evening. When you awaken later, you remember that Marek is the name of the master rogue in the city. I used to work with a guy named Marek, an IT guy. <laughs> if you would like to get directions to his place... Wait, hold on, hold on. Does it say I lost my money? It doesn't say that, but it must mean that, right? I don't know if it doesn't say I lost my money. I'm not going to lose my money. You just want to beat me up randomly, maybe. That doesn't make sense, though, right? That's the photo of what's happening. Or not the photo, the drawing. Uh, all right. <clears throat> I don't know. But, I mean, I kind of want to be fair, but, like, do I just literally lose everything? I mean, that seems a bit much. But it would probably be realistic. <laughs> like, including the ruby I just found, though? But then in that case, why would they... Give you something just to say, well, now you go to the paragraph where you immediately lose this thing. I guess maybe I have a an opportunity to gain whatever I lost back. Because it says you can go to and get directions to his place. Yeah, let's try that. 21D. Are you still there, Rob Bob? Let me disconnect from his call. Uh, um, okay, so we disconnected. And Dan the Man said they steal your clothes and send you to the Naked Doom module. Yeah, that would be funny. No, um, well, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Rob Bob doesn't want to talk about what we're playing much. I guess maybe I'm babbling too much. I try to, I try to get some info out of him or suggestions. He's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's how teenagers are. That's that's teenagehood, right? For some kids. Anyway, I'm not here to ask for parenting advice. So, 21D. You go back into the tavern and demand directions to the home of the Master Rogue. I'm 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 gonna die. I'm gonna die here. You have blood in your eye, probably li literally, and they quickly point you in the direction. You loosen your weapon and it's sheath and go to 45C. Oh man. <laughs> what am I getting into here? <laughs> Just can I please heal my one con somehow? Let's look at this guy. <laughs> 45C. As you pass along this road, you notice a strange glowing in the glen to your left. If you wish to investigate, go to 36E. If you want to continue along your way, go to 11C. Yeah, let's, let's investigate the random glowing. 30, 36E. You come... Oh, is it this guy? Am I fighting this guy? <laughs> you come upon a clearing. In it is a large white metallic craft. It's a spaceship. It looks somewhat like a crab. Sans claws. A hatch opened and two men come rolling out, locked in combat. This is crazy. They spring apart and each draws a sonic sword. So it's like a sound saber, not a lightsaber. When this weapon touches an opponent, it releases enough sound that the vibrations cause damage to the body. As you watch, both men receive blows from the weapons. In your head, you hear someone calling for help. You know it's telepathy, but you can't decide which man is calling for help. To help the man in the black uniform, go to 24, 24D. To help the man in the white suit, go to 13A. To leave the spot, go to 11D. All right, I'm going to help somebody. Um, I am going to help the man in black. I think that's Luke Skywalker. And the white suit guy must be a stormtrooper. It's made that up, but I'm going with that. Obviously, I made that up. <laughs> 24D. I'm gonna get yo. I'm gonna get spite dash. Suddenly, I'm in a sci-fi setting, fighting these weird people. 
You take out your weapon and you cut the man in white down, or at least you try to. He turns and attacks you. The sonic sword will shatter any armor you wear in two combat turns. This man, Ran, has these attributes. Strength 35, IQ 18, luck 20, con 5. At least he's low on constitution too. Dexterity 18 and charisma 15. He's an extraterrestrial criminal who has overpowered his guard, Rinth, the man in black, and he is seeking to escape. He has no armor and his combat adds are 37. The Sonic Sword gets 3 dice plus 5 adds. Uh, well, at least he rolls a low number of dice, so it's that spite that's going to get me, if anything. Uh, Alright, I'll see if I can luck out and not roll any sixes for him, I guess. I guess this is the Sonic Sword. Look at that. Shh. That's the kind of cool concept. It's made of sound and the vibrations harm you. And that is totally a Rob Carver illustration. Again, the the piles of wrinkles and the sinewy nature of everything. <laughs> Another example is on whatever is going on in this opposite page. <laughs> also Rob Carver. Also, the you know, when a man is um shirtless, <laughs> he's very hairy in Rob Carver's world. All right. Yeah, again, it just pretty much comes down to can I avoid sixes and, you know, it's all luck. Nothing I can do to make that not happen. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of running out of space on my random scrap paper here. Let's see. Do I have anything else I can use? I can use the back of my map. All right, let's lay out the info. The info is he's got, what's his name, Ran? Like the Kurosawa movie, Ren. Has, um, bottom line, he has Confi, which is good for me. He has no armor, but he rolls three dice plus 42, actually, because he has 37 dice, but his sword also adds five. So that's, he's actually kind of a match for me, adds wise. And I roll 14 dice plus 43, but I just roll so many more dice that I will definitely win, with the exception of the despite uncertainty. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm not going to beat him in one round. Also, it says he's going to shatter my armor in two rounds, so if I don't beat him in two rounds, I guess I lose my armor entirely. Dan says, I should have looked for the healer first. Instead. Yeah, I guess I could, but the thing is, I have to find him in this deck of wandering people so it's like one out of however many there are here uh at least a dozen you know anyway it's fine let's see how this goes taking big gambles tonight exactly maybe i should have after all upgraded more points into my con it's always good to have constitution all right well, you know if you let's roll them first if you roll the six i'm dead that's how it goes no sixes, and he rolled crappy too. Cool. Five plus uh, five plus forty-two is forty-seven. Maybe I'll just finish him in one round. I probably can do that actually. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a, there's a strong chance I'll do it. Actually, it might even be impossible for me to not beat him. Well, let's just roll. So I got 43 off the bat. And the lowest possible roll would be 14 ones. Which would put me at 57 minus his 47 is 10 damage and he's dead. He has no armor. Yeah, so I win. <laughs> Yay, math. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. That's definitely better than all ones anyway. So yeah, he's dead. Take that, Ran. Okay, so I killed the criminal. Um, hopefully he was truly a criminal who deserves death. Uh, <laughs> and Dan says, what I learned from tonight's stream, go big or go home, apparently. <laughs> and also cheat <laughs> or take liberties. Take liberties. All of that. All right, so I killed him. Yeah, 2060. You know, I know I can always get the PDFs of these games, but I just have a fondness for playing with a real book. 
I like having a real book and pointing my camera at it. It's, it's fun. <laughs> and I feel like I'm being old school. I guess I like old school. Uh, okay, my, my, my phone is still losing power, but very slowly. It's at 12% at this point. Seems to be losing like 1% every 5 or 10 minutes at this point. Uh, and, you know, I guess I need to wrap up the stream within the half hour or so anyway. Anyway, 26D, the, the man in black, Rinth, gets up. He explains that Ran was a criminal who had overpowered him, and he's grateful for your help. As a reward, he will give you something. Make a saving roll at your own level on IQ. I'm not too smart, but I'll try. And they also get into, you can make it at your level. You can not make it at all. At all. You can make it one level above yours or two levels above. All right. So, again, the saving roll system is, uh, excuse me, for a level one roll, it's 20 minus the attribute in question. Oh, do I get any uh, adventure points for killing this guy? What about the other guy? I forgot about that one. He didn't tell me how many to take when I beat the guy who was arm wrestling. Um, let, me, let me check. Did I miss that? Happened to be right next to that paragraph, so I can check real quick. Yeah, it didn't tell me how much adventure points I get. Okay, um, I'm gonna wing it then. Um, if you had con well, there was actually a rule in the manual that says like you know you, there's like one formula for, for how many adventure points is like the sum of all their attributes or like some of the attributes, not maybe not all of them. But he had con forty. I'm gonna say I got fifty. Okay, so I got that. Uh, but anyway, making my saving roll now. Let's break out the lucky saving roll dice. Go big or go home, says Dan. So I'm going to try... Well, I have to roll whatever I roll. But hopefully I can get the uh, the two or more levels higher. Yeah, I did get my adventure points for them, Dan, about uh, for the orcs. Because if, if it's an MR-based creature, it's just you get adventure points equal to the MR. But usually it's supposed to like kind of tell you otherwise. So that seems like a, an oversight. Uh, a lot of these adventures do have little oversights like that. And you just kind of wing it. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, let's roll. Not, I need a 9 or higher. 20 minus my 11 IQ to pass the level 1 saving roll. So it's not, not great odds, but it's totally doable. Oh, good, look, I got doubles. Lucky saving roll dice come through again. So I got eight, and I add and re-roll. So my running total is eight, and... Oh, look at that! Oh! <laughs> go big or go home! That's a double. Uh, six. So my running total is 14. Meaning I've already just barely made making it one level above mine. So let's keep rolling. 14. Okay, so it ends there. My my rolling streak ends there, but it's a twenty altogether. So I rolled uh, a total of thirty-one IQ plus twenty is thirty-one, and therefore I think that's yeah I did make it two level two levels or higher, right? Wait. Oh, at your own level. Oh, I don't like that they do that. I don't think they sh okay. So that means it was a level four saving roll, not a level one. I don't know why I thought it was one. I think I failed actually. Then uh, what did I roll again? I rolled a twenty, so my total was thirty-one. Was it? Yeah, I actually, I, eh. I'm, I'm gonna go with it, but I don't like it. I don't think you should scale it like that. Like you, we roll at your own level. So let me show you the math though behind this, like. Level 1 saving roll is a 20 minus attribute, right? Level 2 is 25. Level 3 is 30. Level 4, which is what I am, is 35. So I had to roll 35 minus my IQ, which is 24, and I rolled a 20. So I actually failed it. I was, like, so excited. I thought I made it, but, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I failed it. It's going to say something like I couldn't understand the technology he's going to provide me, so he just didn't give it to me, or I don't know, something like that. He just like gave me a warm pat on the shoulder. Oh, I actually got something. Did I go to the right paragraph? Maybe it. 
Maybe I maybe I messed up. Let me check. Oh, I, I want to you make it at your level. Okay, it's supposed to be you don't make it at all. Go to seventy. Yeah, I don't like that it does that with like you have to make it at your own level. Anyway, I did. I had such an amazing roll then. That's kind of a shame. It's a fail. Says you don't look too bright to him. He does not want to hand you a complex weapon and fear that you will kill yourself with it by accident. However, he takes from you takes from you your mo okay. This is interesting. He takes from you your most valuable piece of treasure. He puts it into a machine worth a machine which makes two dice worth of exact copies of the item. Now, I'm not sure if Merrick stole my ruby or not, but I'm gonna keep going with that he didn't because it didn't say he did. <laughs> uh, but two dice worth of copies of my ruby, I guess. <laughs> I might have like thirteen in total of this one thousand gold ruby. Any magic will not be copied, but the material value of the item is there. And they will still be accepted as legal tender anywhere. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Go big or go home. Hey, you know, even though I failed the roll, that's pretty cool, right? All right. Uh, so let's keep rolling the lucky gold dice. This is how many copies of the ruby I get. Oh, Reroll the one that fell out. Uh, three and oh, six that's nine. So I got nine copies of the room. <laughs> I'm running 10 of these. That's crazy. I mean, I've got a lot of money now, but I still have that one constitution that's gonna get me killed. How bonkers. All right, uh, maybe I should go to the city square. I think you're right, Dan. I should cut my losses. Although, uh, I, I still feel like I was supposed to lose something with Merrick. I bet this is an error in the thing that hasn't been revised since, <laughs> since 1978. An error in the text. I don't know, though. Well, you know, I'm not going to force myself to, get, to lose something just because of the... An oversight in their writing. <laughs> um, but let's let's go to the town square at 33th and try to find that healer, even though it's unlikely. Okay, so we can go. We can go anywhere but the 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 Black Dragon Tavern. Let's go to the um. Either east or west. Let's go east on the dark way to 40C. Oh, this one. <laughs> okay, I remember this. I remember this. It's kind of funny, though. Like, suddenly I'm in a house. When I was, I'm just going east on a street or something. So I didn't actually go into an intersection, which is when you would draw a wandering person. Apparently, I just, I, it's kind of weird. Did I just, like, enter a random house or something? Anyway, there's an old cat lady here. Um, bear with me a second. Uh, sorry, where did I go? East on the dark way? Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, in the center of this room, you have just entered from the dark way. You see an old woman. She has gray hair and her sh shoulders are covered with a shawl. Cats are all over the place. And now the Rob Carver wrinkle, wrinkliness in his artwork seems very appropriate for an old lady. Very wrinkly old lady. <laughs> Look, if you are a man tiger, this is where you can get cured or something. Or maybe she takes you in as one of her own. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> excuse me. You see an old woman. She has gray hair and her shoulders are covered with a shawl. Cats are all over the place. If you intend to speak with her, go to 4A. If you want to make love to her, go to 50E. It's like, hello, lady. Can I? I'm sure there's a pet your cat joke in there. I'll let you fill in the blanks. Um, if you're a magic user and want to cast a spell, go to 7A after writing it down. If you're a man tiger from the Death Trap Eagle, I don't go to 49B. Um, 
Yeah, this is the one who... <laughs> I'm going to spoil this. I remember this because it was so stupid. I think this is the character who does that. If you try to make love to her... Um, if this is the one I'm thinking of, I'm like 90% sure it is. I think you need to make like some kind of a role like charisma or something. And if you succeed, she likes it. And then she casts a permanent... So there's a spell in this game, right? All the spells in this game have silly names. Like, oh, go away, makes the enemy go away. Um, there's a spell that makes objects bigger called bigger is bigger is better. And after you make love to her, if she likes it, she will cast a permanent... And now I never got this until I was a, when I was a kid. At least not, not at first. It took a little bit of processing or over a couple of years i think but she cast a modified version of bigger is better after sex with you and it permanently makes a certain part of you bigger <laughs> and your charisma thereby increases <laughs> except they don't explicitly say it makes a, a, a body a body part bigger i, I kind of had to in, in uh implicitly figure that out on my own it took me till <laughs> it took me till i was like 12 or so to figure that out or like ten or eleven year old, he was like, I don't know what this is about. Why would why would bigger is better make your make your charisma go up, especially after doing an old lady? Um. Anyway, <laughs> I, I feel like I have to try that just because it's ridiculous. It's possible I'm misremembering it, but I don't think I would be. So I'm gonna try it. Although I think I probably have to make a charisma roll or something like that, and my charisma is not great. It's nine. She might do something horrible to me, turn me into a cat, a cat man. <laughs> Um, all right, let's try it. I'm going to try to make love to her. Hello, old cat lady. And remember what Ken, what Ken said in the, um, intro, you know, you assume that there's levels of flirtation here happening. It's not just like, you're like, well, let's go. <laughs> Hello, old lady. Let's do it. Did that hurt? I'm like, hey, baby. Look at my short arms. <laughs> Here's your bed. Should we leave the cat on your shoulder or not? <laughs> you cad. It takes a real degenerate to, pro to proposition an old lady who is a, a grandmother type. She says it's the best offer she's had all day. She makes love to you after she... Oh, she does this first. That's right. She makes love to you after she casts a modified... Bigger is better spell on you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Raise your charisma by three and go to 35C with her undying gratitude. So yeah, I mean, I guess I'm more charming now that I have that uh, larger <laughs> nature to my character. Uh, may, you know, you got to wonder what that's about because like most people aren't seeing that, but I guess it gives me extra confidence, extra swagger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dan the man is typing LOL twice. So I assume he is really doubling over with laughter like I am. Um, yeah, let me increase my my charisma by three. And there's no real need to actually note that I've been bigger is bettered. I just increased my charisma. Now I have 12 charisma. Thanks to the old lady. Go to 35C with her undying gratitude. For some reason, I thought it might have been a different encounter, possibly in another adventure, where I had to like make a charisma roll to successfully make it with the woman. But I guess because she is an old lady, she doesn't get those offers every day. 35C. The modified... I'll never forget the modified bigger is better spell. I remembered that. That's probably one of the top five memories of the game that I have. Not necessarily the best memories, but like just something I could not forget. I think I remember asking my brother when I was a kid and naive. I was like, why does, or it was like a totally other, con totally other context. Like, I don't know, maybe we were playing a GM version of the game and we were talking about the bigger is better spell. And I was like, well, that actually increases your charisma if you cast that. I should try doing that. And he was like, I don't think it does that. I was like, well, no, I remember in City of Terrors, you, <laughs> you, uh, you kind of get it on with this old lady and bigger is better. Anyway, it was a modified bigger is better. It does a certain thing. Anyway, as you can see here, there is a Medusa-like character. Did I get that mirror? Yeah, I did. I'm not, at the, I'm not in that paragraph right now, but, um, yeah, here is where I am. 
Dan the man has four LOLs. Okay, great. <laughs> this is what <laughs> that is pretty hilarious, isn't it? Um, I'm glad they didn't like censor that one. You know, like, I I can kind of appreciate and I can understand why they made that modification to the illustration in the back with the top with the woman and it being traded as a slave and stuff. And you know, people making rude comments. Um, but that is just funny. I'm glad they kept that in. <laughs> and you know, it's an excuse to get charisma points. Okay, 35C. This is where the Range C Road and the Dark Way intersect. So now we're at an intersection, and therefore I can um uh draw a random person. And it's called the other the other the other road is called Range C Road. Okay. I'm gonna tell you real quick what I'm drawing. Do 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 it's not focusing, but I do that here. All right. Um yeah, I'm at, inter I'm at an intersection, so let's uh I never really sh properly shuffled up these cards. Dan says best offer shadow day, yeah, exactly. I'm going to shuffle these up a little bit if it matters much because it's not like I know what they are. And I will try to draw the healer guy. I would really like to get him now. I, f I still feel like I'm going to like instantly die at any moment because my con is one and spite damage is the thing. But um, let's draw somebody. and Hopefully it is our healer friend. It is. Oh no, it's Sarg the Vampire. I don't think he's going to give me a, a healing. I don't think he's going to heal me. Sarg the Vampire. See, that's another thing, reason why these needed to be updated for um for deluxe rules, because level is determined by your attributes. So he shouldn't be level 3 because he got 37 strength. But uh... Dan the Man says, Hope Charisma comes in handy later if this character survives. Guess TNT doesn't have a camp or rest feature to regain con... Not like inherent in the game, um, unfortunately. I always assume when I leave an adventure, I can fully gain everything. Some specific adventures might say, you know, you can rest here and regain strength or whatever, or wiz wizardry. You know, would have to like explicitly say that in the paragraph. You know, you could always invent the house rule, though. You could say something like, usually when people do have house rules like this, it's like every X paragraph, you could gain a strength or whatever. And that's good, but it can also be such a huge pain to keep track of a... Oh, did I go five paragraphs so far or not? And but eh, I'm just gonna play it, play it straight, and hopefully find a, a means of healing. But for now, I have to deal with this Zarg the Vampire. And if he killed me, the way to play it, that actually have to add my character as a new card in the deck because I'll have my characters turned turned into a vampire. And I there's actually a good chance I'm gonna die right now, and I think that would be fun. To add my character to the deck as a vampire. So I'm going to do that if I die. I might have to end the stream there. Because you know, it is 12.15 p.m. Uh, a.m. And I have 6% on my phone. And and if I die, it does seem like it maybe this, it's all coming together that I should just end the stream. But anyway, Zarg the Vampire has 27 combat as and gets 3 dice in a fight. He's immune to poison. Any player killed by him has become a vampire. Multiply strength by 5 halves. Luck and IQ by three halves. The character should now be put in the wandering person pile and he is subservient to Zarg. Zarg, if killed, is worth 52 experience points. All right. Dan says, I wish we had the Sonic Sword now if your character wasn't so dumb. Really, I just need to not have this constitution problem. But um, this is actually just like that fight with the guy who had the sword more or less rolling three dice i just have to hope none of them are a six otherwise i should totally own him and he doesn't have much con either all right so that's the way i see it is three dice if any if i roll any sixes i'm dead otherwise it's good the oversimplification but uh not too far from accurate all right here we go any sixes and i'm done ah oh, there's a six well, Zarg got me. <laughs> Zarg got me with his one spite. Well, that sucks. But, um, 
Got a new subscriber, Bren B. Thank you, Bren B, for subscribing. Yeah, I think I'm going to put him in the deck. Maybe I'll resume next week. You know, not with this character, obviously, but uh, can roll up a new one. And uh, that, yeah, you know, it's a tough adventure. And uh, I think we played it well. And I think playing uh, my character at level four was pretty good. Um, I did forget again. I'm stupid. I can always do this. When I play a human, I forget to give myself the bonus roll of saving rolls. I also forgot to give myself adventure points. Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this. I'm going to cheat, but it's not really a bad cheat. It's actually just kind of rewinding a moment. I forgot to do something. I forgot to do something that I should have done. I'm going to say I did it. I don't think this is a bad cheat. You can spend your adventure points 10 times the current level of the attribute to upgrade it by one. What if I say just a moment ago, I spent 130 to upgrade my con to 14, and then I have two left. That's what I did <laughs> right before Zarg the vampire bit me. So now I have one. I'm still going. I'm still rolling with it. I'm rolling with it. Spent my, hold on. I got to get myself 14 max con. Yeah, that's what I'm saying I did. It's not even really cheating. I just, I spent it. You can spend it at any time as far as I'm aware. So I did that. Cool. I figured it out. <laughs> All right, so now I just have to roll enough damage to kill Zarg. And again, I'm probably just going to end the stream soon anyway. But um, let's see what I do to Zarg. His total is actually, let's roll the total. He has an 11 plus his adds of, um, the hell was it? Of 27 is 28. So yeah, I got him. So I beat him by five off the bat knocking him down to three con, and then my 14 dice just annihilate him. All right, so I killed Zarg the Vampire. I, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, put him at the bottom of the deck, or just take him out entirely. Put him at the bottom. Oh, what do I get? I get 52 adventure points. All right. Hooray for figuring out <laughs> a way out. And apparently I don't need a wooden stake or anything to kill this vampire. He's not a very strong vampire, actually. Okay, uh, yeah, so we're at this 35C intersection. Um, taking the dark way, you may go east to 16A or west to 33C. 33C is back to the city square. The range C road goes north to a dark alley, 1A, or south to 36B. Uh, let's go south to 36B. I don't need to be in a dark alley. In a sense, it doesn't matter because everything is a danger in this place. 36B is conveniently on the next page. We're at another intersection, so another chance to get healed. I will consider this a win if I can just luckily draw the healer. And the man said, I thought there was some upgrade you could do with AP, but don't remember all the rules. Enjoy the story most of all. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of worked out. 130 when my con was 13, that was like perfect. I guess, I guess technically I should have done it before I rolled the spider or whatever, but. All right, so we have another intersection. Um, yeah. Let's try to roll that or draw that healer dude and let's see what we get. Ah, oh, we got Seth the Slaver. He's a jerk. Slavers are loathsome. Kill him when you see him. He's an always attack. Oh, so I don't have a choice. You get 500 gold pieces as a reward. He fights with a Warhammer. And I'm probably done because it's... any of those five dice turn up a six and he's got me. A Warhammer that does five minus one. Five dice minus one for some reason. Whereas leather armor, six hits, and carries a nice shield, five hits. Uh, yeah, I'm going to totally annihilate him. It's just, I mean, if I can escape the, the spite, but it does seem unlikely. Five chances to roll one six. Is he likely going to roll one six? And then again, you know, it does kind of make sense that timing wise <laughs> for me to wrap up the stream as I die. Uh, all right, I'm going to roll it. Five dice. Any sixes and I'm done. I don't think I have any other tricks up my sleeve. I can't spend any more adventure points. Um. I can't come up with anything. 
I could bribe him with money. I mean, if I was doing the thing where I try to be creative and make saving rolls and stuff, I could say, well, maybe if I make a charisma saving roll, he'll let me bribe him. I'm not going to do that. You know, we got to end the stream soon. So let's see what happens. Death the slaver. Does he kill me? It's weakling. Is he th is the weakling the one who finishes me off? Let's find out. Yep, he is. <laughs> the weakling slaver is. You would think a slaver would be kind of tough, maybe, though. Because he's got to be, like, physically imposing or something. Anyway, I guess not. I did not survive, and that is the end of B.D. Gonzalez. Actually, his name is just Gonzalez, but he happens to have 17 speed, which was my highest roll when I when I rolled up the character. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call him dead. He was killed by Seth the Slavery. He could not. He was pretty much, for like, the majority of the game, just, you know, on the edge of death, and Spite was his worst enemy. Pretty much overpowering everybody he fought, but Spite is the killer. Um, I kind of like the spite rule because it does make it that, you know, you can still take damage when you're stronger. Um, before the spite rule was introduced, it was kind of like, it kind of like you never even had to worry about constitution as long as you were a good enough fighter, kind of, sort of, because, you know, um, in this game is like, you know, a strong offense is a good defense, right? If I have you know, a million strength and I roll a million dice, <laughs> nothing else matters. I would just totally overwhelm everybody and they cannot get a hit in. Like in some games where they could sneak a lucky hit in. But, but Spite does change that. And I do like it. I think it's good. Um, Spite isn't new anymore, but it did not exist in the 5th edition, which is the one I played back in the day. Again, this guy here. This is the 5th edition. A lot of people actually like the fifth edition, most of all. Some people to this day say it's the best one. I do like that it's a slim manual. I like most of the changes to 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 deluxe. Um, overall, I do like deluxe. It looks like I zoomed in. That's why it was all wonky. I like the 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 cover art to the to the uh, fifth edition here seems more classic. Just a big freaking troll getting zapped and a party fighting against him. Dan the man says that this character lived way longer than I expected. He went big, but finally got sent home. Yeah. Gonzalez the vampire is going to kill your next adventure. No, he did. He turned out not to be a vampire because the slaver got him, actually. Maybe I'll make him a vampire anyway. <laughs> uh, you know what? As much as I do like the D T T rules, as long as I'm talking about this, and I do like Luke Danforth's artwork a lot, I don't really get the cover here. I guess these two people are being ambushed by this withered and whatever's going on here. I, I, I don't know. I guess I, I, the other, the, I guess this one just seems so straightforward. It seems like very bait. It kind of seems more fitting to TNT. It's uh, this guy's casting like a take that you fiend spell at this troll and everybody's, you know, jumping into the battle. So this, I don't know. This, this is fine though. I, and I like the colors a lot and the lighting. I just don't quite get what's happening 100%. <laughs> anyway, I guess my, 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 what I just figured is probably about right. They're like, these two guys are the good guys getting ambushed. But I don't know. This one could be one of the party members, perhaps. I guess not, though. The dwarf is looking back like, hey, what's going on? And she's like, uh oh. These two look related, though. Look at them. Look at their faces. I don't know. I'm just talking nonsense now. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, that was fun. Um, Gonzalez is dead, although he was very speedy. Um, I'm going to show off a little thing I invented. It, it might be published in a issue of Trollzine. So, Trollzine is a fan magazine, TNT. And, um, I, I have an article that might be published in that. I've been talking to the man who, um, who's also named Dan, by the way who's uh, in, the editor-in-chief of that. And it's, it's just a fan magazine. So this is always a, a small peeve of mine. Now, I, I'm, I'm apparently the only one who gets annoyed by a little wonkiness in rules. But this is called the learning the language, learning a language chart. And uh, it's fine. This is about which languages you know based on your intelligence and stuff. But what I never liked about it, and this, this goes back to the fifth edition as well, it says roll D100, which means you take two 10-sided dice. One is a 10s number, one is the ones, and you roll like that. It's fine. For most people, they probably don't care. But this is otherwise an all 
D6's game, right? This is what you use in TNT. So to me, <coughs> excuse me. To me, it's slightly annoying. Or a game where, I, where I'm using D6 is for everything else. Suddenly, I gotta go. Oh man! Now I gotta go find some D10. So I actually wrote my own variant of that chart. Why wasn't I zooming in this much earlier? I should have done that more often. Anyway. It, it's basically the same exact chart, and it tries to keep all the probabilities from the original as close to, uh, you know, as similar as possible. But it just uses three six-sided dice. You would make you would assign each one to a digit, like the hundreds place, tens and ones, and you just just roll them like that. Um, and uh, when I shared this to the Facebook group, Ken St. Andre was like, I, if I had this before I published Deluxe, I would have put that in there. So I was like, oh, man, <laughs> that's cool. He liked it. And I would have uh, gotten in the book if I had done that earlier. But uh, yeah, I think in general, people don't really care about pulling out D10s. Um, but, you know, to me, it's a D6 game. Just don't don't use D10s. D I don't know. I guess I'm weird like that. Anyway, I guess it's time to wrap up the stream. Wah, wah. I did have fun. I felt like I only scratched the surface of City of Terrors. So I'm inclined to say I'm going to revisit it next time, next week. Um, I'll, I'll probably roll up a character live again. I won't, I won't go over all the intro stuff again. Um, I think level four is a pretty sweet spot. Pretty good sweet spot for a character to be at. Although, you know, as you can see, it does scale some of the challenges according to your level. Like when it asked me to make a level four saving roll on IQ. So maybe in a sense, my my um my house rule, I don't know, my house rule might not be good enough. Because my house rule says you can uh, bump up one stat, one attribute to the level it needs to be, like 40 for level four. Then you get some dice to assign to others as well. But the other dice, you know, I feel like it's very much, um the extra dice that you assign is, is not a lot. Right. Uh, nonetheless, I think it's a pretty good system. Maybe I'll tweak it somehow. Um, and I'll probably use that system next week if I do play this again. Maybe I'll try a different kindred, like a dwarf or something, or even something that has spells, like an elf wizard, perhaps. Um, I can make a leprechaun. Those are always silly. And Dan the Man says, Man Tiger would easily defeat and eat all of his foes and be ruler of the city of terror. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, I guess that has to be a wrap for tonight, though. So thanks for joining me. Hey, I got six likes on the stream. Woohoo! I usually don't get that many likes. Uh, so that's good. Um, yeah, I did advertise this in the Tunnels and Trolls Facebook group, so hopefully some of those folks were watching. And, uh, is there anything else left to say? No, City of Terror, it's a lot of fun, I gotta say. Um, even if it's a bit rough. Honestly, I don't think I encountered... I don't, I don't think I encountered anything that seemed blatantly unfair, given... What I'm trying to say is given the right level of character being in the adventure in the first place, right? Right. Like, so the orcs totally overpowered me when I was a level two guy, but I shouldn't have had one in the first place. One of the biggest problems with TNT solos, in my view, is they're often very loose in talking about what kind of characters can be in it. They just say, like, you know, any low level guy or any mid level guy, or sometimes they say anyone up to 100 combat ads. Okay, does that mean two combat ads is fine? And over, you know, as you play it, as you play a particular adventure, you you kind of learn the kind of guys can, that can survive in it. But they're a little too unspecific generally. They should be saying things like anybody under 50 ads will have a really hard time. <laughs> or you should be at least level four, max level eight. It can go pretty high. It, it often seems like the way a lot of them are described, they're worried more about the game being too easy for players. A lot of them are described as you should not have a character with more than 100 ads here. Like, okay, then is 10 going to die? Well, probably. <laughs> um, so that was always a problem. And probably the biggest complaint that newbies have when they try Tunnels and Trolls is they just die. They say, I'm trying every adventure I got, and all I do is die and die and die. And I tried this one, and it said, adds up to 50. Uh, should I not have my ads 5 guy? And they're asking the community, right? And they say, and the community has to guide them and say, yeah, well... If it says adds five, you know, if it says max adds 50 and you have five, you're probably going to be having a hard time. But it should have said it. It'll be like 30 to 50 instead of saying max 50. Anyway, I'm just kind of ranting. Um, 
But Dan the Man said, uh, some means of healing would be helpful if possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I could play a wizard. And um, wizards can get a spell. I think it's a level two spell called Poor Baby. Because TNT just has silly names. And that heals you. Um, you know, it, it says that you can only use spells when specifically prompted. But there's usually a generally accepted idea that, you know, spells like healing, you can just do whenever. Um, you know, and uh, if you're in combat, you can cast the main combat spell, which is called Take That You Fiend and other stuff like that. Take That You Fiend essentially lets you roll. Um, you don't actually don't roll. You do damage equal to your, your intelligence score, and you can multiply it. Uh, you can put, like, several levels into it, sort of. Like, if you put a, do a level 3 Take That You Fiend, then it's your intelligence times 3, and so you don't even roll the dice. It's usually assume that you can do stuff like that, even if, even if you're not prompted to, because it just kind of you know it's a, a way to mechanically, uh, make effects happen rather than anything that's that needs to be described via paragraph text, if I'm making sense at all. Anyway, you don't need to see my mess of a desk. Um, then the set man says maybe better armor, except against the sonic sword, of course. I mean. Armor wasn't my problem here. It was the spite. Maybe I just need more constitution. You know, maybe I should just play a dwarf. I always found that dwarves were kind of like the e easy level difficulty because they have a ton of constitution and a ton of strength. And um, it, they're, a good, they're a good way to go often. Anyway, I guess that's it for tonight. So thanks, Dan, for chatting with me so much. And thank you to everybody else as well. Eric Johnson. Um, as usual, thanks for joining. I don't know if you're still here, Eric, but I appreciate your viewership as always, and also to Stu's game reviews. He's probably doing his own stream by now. He usually streams on Saturday nights, and he kind of steps out quietly. Also to Arturo, who chatted just once, he said, dumb boy, and thank you to Lago Mosker, who I believe is somebody from the TNT group, or one of the TNT groups. Um, I'm not sure, though. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. I, and again, I'm kind of inclined to repeat it next week, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's all. So yeah, see you next time, guys. Take care.